Yeah, literally, like, his, his head exploded and it just hit the ground. Guard. I didn't know you were so good with words. Uh, alright. So I'm gonna move there, right around the, like, hiding kind of near the corner of this building here. And cast Ray of Sickness on the big guy. Alright. Roll for attack. You blast into it. And it looked like it was about to hit, but as Rook just blasted open with his radiant energy, it got pushed a little bit just out of the way. Uh, that'll be my turn. All right, Emery. Okay, um, Richard Weapon's going to attack the fairy right in front, or the sprite right in front of it. Okay. Definitely hits. As your spiritual weapon swings through, all of a sudden, you just see two little pairs of wings floating in the air, but you don't know where the fairy went. So it's just the wings were left in the air? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like it's dead. Uh, just one second. Okay, I'm going to move outside. And I cast Word of Radiance Cantrip. All right, so. Like they both take two radiant damage. As you step in and then you cast a word of radiance, as the holy energy reverberates through the air, they just explode. Uh, can I attack with my spiritual weapon and then move it, or is it mo like once it's attacked, it's it's turn? It's a whole part of an action economy, so you can just do it in whatever order you need to do it. Okay. Uh, give me control of it. Uh, e -choo -choo -choo. Just give me one sec. There you go. Move it 20 feet, maximum movement. All right, anything else? No, that's all I got. All right, Cinder. Okay, okay, okay. Um... I'm going to wait. Hold on. Uh, so it's con is it control or shift to do that thing where you oh, is it shift? Is it shift? Okay. To go to one point and then and then yeah. Oh, you you uh, you use your right mouse button. So you hold down your left mouse button and use your right like tap your right mouse button on each square. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, that was awkward. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, it keeps moving my screen up too. Okay, whatever. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to move over here. And then I am going to uh, take my crossbow bolt out that I'm going to load my crossbow with. And I'm going to slice my left hand. And kind of like smack each side in the blood that comes out, and then I'm gonna load it in my crossbow bolt, and then it's gonna the tip's gonna ignite into a flame, and then I'm going to shoot at the owl bear. Um, I'm going to aim where, uh, with my past knowledge of Fey, where its heart would be, I guess, and then that. Definitely a hit. Okay, sweet. Uh, and then that damage. Oh, oh, it still has right. a half sick. And then wait, hold on. Again. And then my right dice. All right, so 16, 18 points of damage. 
so the the hex goes on the right dice as well is that right uh it's just whenever you hit it so your right dice is not actually hitting okay so that four is nothing then no okay no, exactly okay gotcha gotcha yeah um, hex works is whenever you hit a creature you add uh, with an attack you add that damage on top so your right isn't yeah, natural, it's just right doing back. that in roll twenty because yep. I have that thing. Okay. Um. Yep. And then I'm good. All right. And with your turn, you all of a sudden see like, as you hit it, and once again, it was a nice clean shot near where you believe its heart would be. It almost slumps a bit, and it's like, <laughs> but then it's, <laughs> and it just gets up on all four uh, on two legs and just pounds. The fence so it'll on it it'll hit so let's just see how much damage this thing is going to do in this turn oh, he wants father hogum <laughs> 30 points of damage as you Whoa. see a section of the fence right in this area Damn, Calvin, good thing you moved. <laughs> this is a rod on your fence too, right, you said? Yeah. Wow. That's that section right there. So it's attacking the whole fence, and it's starting to like push it over, but you see as a second claw comes down, it actually pushes down just this section of the fence. All right. Father Hogan will come out to here. By the light! What is going on here? <gasps> They've come for me. I know too much. And Rook. Uh, I'm going to uh, throw Hunter's Mark on the Owlbear. Ro uh, roll me perception real quick, Rook, before you do that. Some kind of Paladin Ranger. He does say multi-class. Did you say a perception check? Yeah, just uh, just general. Paladin Ranger? Before you attack. <gasps> this thing looks like it's on its last leg. You know, I was going to ask that, but I got a, I got a, just a little bit gung-ho. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll just take a swing at it then. Extra break, murder. Break its face. I mean, don't no! break its face. <laughs> All right. Roll and don't even roll damage. How do you want to do this? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to swing my great sword uh, as cleanly as I can at its neck. Yes. To try and sever the head off. Yes. That saves me from having to do it. All right. Roll me damage just because I want to see how, how deep you go with this cut. Yeah. 11 points. So as it comes down on the fence, Rook. It turns to you, and its eyes are ablaze. It it's about to take a big bite at you. You sidestep and cleave its head straight off. The body goes back to its normal size slowly, but the head stays the same. Oh, Cinder yes. is automatically attracted to this. <laughs> <laughs> Atomic man. And then as you look over, Rook, in this direction, you see for a blit split moment in the shadow of the building, a very large smile. And a little dull blade comes up, does a slashing motion, and it dissipates. Fuck those things. All right. Huzzah! God, I hate those With laughing that, busters. Combat. Busters. Okay, I'm going to bravely leave the safety of the building I stayed <laughs> in the entire time. You little pansy. I'm going to start using mending in my hands to fix that uh, fence as much as possible, just as big, quickly yeah. as possible. Um, it's a it's a ten foot square. I know that. Okay, so is there any are are there parts of like is it in parts? What sort of a fence? Yeah, you're going to have to take you a while to keep mending it back up and trying to fix it. Like it, I'm gonna, it'll. Yep. I'm going to pour spells into it for as long as it takes to get it up. Okay, what's everybody else doing? I'm looking at um, Garth being like, why is the fence your first priority? I <laughs> uh, can't talk casting, but I want to have a safe place to sleep tonight, and this is our best bet. Okay. 
Um, as uh, Cinder moves over to the corpse, I assume to retrieve mm-hmm. the head. Mm-hmm. I uh, I kind of uh, walk up beside her and say, "What what fascinating magics you you wield? Uh, you use blood?" Uh, yeah, yeah. It's called the uh, hemomancy. Amazing. Yeah, it uh, does a lot of damage sometimes. Is it always your blood that's required? Yeah. Has to be through me. Do you? I assume you take damage when this happens. I sure do, and thank you for reminding me at a game because I needed to take damage. <laughs> well, here, let me let me help bind those wounds for you. Oh, thank and you. I, I use the healer's kit. All right. Uh, you have to keep track of uses. There's ten uses on a healer kit. Yep, I am, and I have like two kits. Right yep, just so making sure. All right, what is everybody else doing? Wait, how much does that heal me for? Or what does that do? He I'm rolls for it. Tell you in a second. Oh, okay, I it only hurt me for. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to. Okay, good. <laughs> Here, let me just wrap your hand up. <laughs> Anybody do anything while Emery's healing up Cinder? I'm going to be carefully inspecting the corpses for any signs of branding or smiles or anything that indicates what kind of enemy we're up against. Sure. What body are you going to first? Uh, I'd like to inspect them all, but I'm starting with the big one and then moving on to the fairies a little bit after. All right. So do you look at the owlbear's head? Yep. All right. As you look into the owlbear's eyes, you all hear a voice. Oh, adventurers. It seems that you come to the wrong place. I have a deal with this town. You may all leave within the next two days or meet my champion. Uh, fuck that. I hated that so much. <laughs> uh, can I try asking the head if it's the Bandit King? Or if that was who I was talking about. He is my champion. Well, not can, we, can we find out if that's two days, like 48 hours starting now? Or like, are you going sunset to sunrise? What's How's that work? Are you asking that? Yeah, definitely. While still working on the fence. That is up to you, whatever you decide. All I know is the time schedule I keep. Now long until your demise. So what's everybody doing? I don't know, I'm too scared now. <laughs> I don't like it. Apologize, Grandma. I have to apologize, Graham. I didn't get all of that. Did he set terms? Or did he just say two days? He said two days. It's up to you if you all we, leave. Otherwise, you'll meet a champion. I'm going to ask the head, what are your terms? Roll me a persuasion check. Oh, he said meet my champion, not... Sorry, it's kind of just hard to understand him. I hate it, but... um, it. To me, it sounded like he was referring to blind as my champion, but he said meet my champion. Yeah. My okay. Champion. Okay. Yeah. So call it a persuasion. Should be in there. Yeah, I see it. Pretty good. Let's remind me one second. What you're asking? What are your terms to not do that? I guess. I have a deal with this town. Long ago, and the terms have been broken. You can leave with your lives, or you can leave without them. Deal with this town, you mean? Yes, they made a deal long ago. 
Some may not remember. Some may. But the deal holds the same. How long ago? <laughs> You don't get all the answers. All you need to know is the terms are set. Is Hogram close enough to be listening to all this? Oh, you can all hear this. It's radiating. Uh, Cinder's just gonna, like, aggressively grab the head and, like, stare it in the eyes and be like, what was the deal? Well, if you'd like to know, the clock is ticking. Ugh, whatever. You're going up on a wall. So you hard. notice that the eyes uh, start to fade away, and they just turn back into the normal black. Hogram, what do you make of this deal? Do you recall such a thing? Hogram looks at you and goes, Oh, well, yeah. please... And he's seen the Garth fixing the fence. Uh, let's let's get this fence put back up, and uh, we can all talk inside. Uh, we're not safe outside of these walls. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Father, we're not safe until we do a sweep for we folk inside. There was a breach in the fence for a moment. Yes, you're you're, you're absolutely correct. Yes, yes. And he's he's helping you. Uh, he's mending up the fence as well, and uh, it's going to be putting it back together. Probably it's going to take. Uh, close to about 15, 20 minutes to get it all fixed up, and then if someone who's stronger is helping, to put it back in place. Um, I can help. Father Hogan looks at you, Rook, and goes, Oh, yes, uh, you, you seem to have some strength as I saw you deal a mighty blow to that foul creature. I'll assist um, Rook with uh, propping it back up. Well, while we're working on that, I'll say to Cinder, hey, Cinder, if you're going to take that head into the tavern to see if they want to mount it, do you want to see if uh, if our chef wants to get some meat off this owlbear? Uh, yeah, I guess. I thought she was sleeping, and the last time I woke her up, it did not work out well. Oh, good point. You know what? Maybe don't risk it. I don't think we need... I don't want to eat the... I don't want to eat this thing. Well, neither it's do I, but... Fla fable it. Beyblood, no! Is there, is there enough uh, hide here, Dungeon Master, to make some kind of garment out of? If you find someone who is uh, leather working, there is a very large. Uh, some of it is a bit discolored now. Um, uh, well, the head is staying the grotesque feature. The main body is starting to go back to normal. Uh, if you find someone who can do this type of leather working and is finely skilled, uh, you could probably at least get a cloak out of it. Wait, what's wrong with the head? The head is like grotesque and huge. Yeah, when it when oh. it doubled, like when it grew in size, it got all like funky and weird. Yeah, before the curse could end, well, the uh, thing ended. Uh, Rook chopped the head straight off in one clean blow. Okay, so it's does like anybody, okay. Does anybody know anything about owl bears? Uh, do they normally do that? I should know things, right? You can roll me nature. Uh, nature? I don't think nature. Yep, it's an owl bear. It lives in nature. Isn't it also a fey creature? They are not. They are not. Okay. Well, I don't know. Hold on. Let me think in my big brain. If I use Arcana or History, would I have any ability to figure out what the type of magic was that was used to make it do that? Uh, with it, roll me an Arcana. Let's see what what would happen to it. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know it was a spell, for mm -hmm. sure. You just don't have no idea. You can't recall in your uh, memory right now what spell. You know of other ones, like Enlarge and everything like that. That's normal. But this seemed to have multiple types of effects. Uh, Cinder with 11, you know that owl bears are usually found very deep in the woods. Uh, they protect their nests quite a bit. Um, with an 11, it's odd to see one close to town. It's about what you know. Yeah, I'm going to convey that and also be like, this is, it's just part of the corruption. It's just one of the things that whoever this is has used to do their evil bidding. So they're they're using local wildlife and twisting them and dementing them to for their own means. 
Yeah, like same with the those uh little pixie friends. They um I feel like they were corrupted too. They're definitely cuz they yeah, were feral. They're definitely under an definitely under an influence of something. Yeah. They I mean they're they're fey. They're not necessarily to be trusted regardless it seems, but they're definitely there was something weird about the ones that we first fought. Uh Calvid, you would notice um as you're poking the bodies, these ones uh are deformed just like the one you found within the town master's hall. Uh they are gray and faded. They have very large teeth and the wings almost look like uh they are just tattered and worn out. I'll, I'll relay that to the rest of the party and then also ask did anyone see what happened to this the the other one, the quick one, the small one, the uh, one with the grin? There oh, was one another the one. Uh, Rook is actually the only one who got a good look at him. Yeah, I was inside. It made a slashing motion at me, and then gave me a big smile. And Wait, wasn't ran... I in? Sorry, I'm sorry, Rook. I didn't mean to. I just wasn't I like outside and able to see it run. You saw it run away, but you were over here. You didn't okay. see what happened to it after. Mm -hmm. Rook was right here, and it almost seemed like it wanted you to see it, Rook, before it got away. So it's still out there. Does that does that sound like the creature that we saw in the uh, tree, mushroom tree, goblin hole? From the description, it does. Yeah, they're all like smiley little bitches that like to disappear. It it. It uh, dished out quite a bit of damage, if, I, if I'm not mistaken there. Right, Rook? Y yes. Yeah, they suck. Oh, well, does Rook need... Rook, do you need healing? I would appreciate bleed? that. Yeah, I would have offered, but I wasn't sure if I'm do able bleed? to heal you. Do you bleed? you just, like, battery <laughs> yeah. acid everywhere? Out, I don't, I don't of, know how you out of character, work. Out of character, Dungeon Master, am I able to heal him as, as normally as anybody else? Uh, it, you're going to have to do it a different, different way. So, <laughs> Rook, this is new to you. You have never sustained a good amount of damage like this before. You have a little bit of a crack, actually, near your chest piece. And weirdly enough, it almost seems like it's spilling some type of light-type energy out of your body. Oh. Are you okay? Like, do you do you feel pain? Yes. Yes. This does not feel good. No. <laughs> this does not compute. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what pain is? Okay, so no? okay. I'm, pr okay. I'm pretty sure we I'm pretty sure we can heal between between all of us. I'm sure we can figure this out. Um, if I, let's maybe should we try magical healing first and see? Well, see I five. was gonna I was gonna recommend uh, if I could do some more mundane healing, uh, i.e. healer's kit, if that would do anything to him. Yeah, just wrap up. Twelve points of healing as Father Hogum comes up. Oh, <laughs> the crack in your armor and goes ah, the light diffuses from you here. You are definitely one to help. And he touches you, and you see that the crack in the armor, though a little bit of a scar is still slightly there, it has a uh, sealed back up. Okay, so magical healing works. <laughs> That's good to know. Good to know. Hmm. You're a curious one, Tin Man. Thank Gar you. Garth. Angry one. <laughs> Funny. Uh, Garth, my dear. Yes. Hello. Uh, are you done with your little fence mending? I look at the fence. Am I done with the fence mending? <laughs> you are done with the fence mending. Between the help of everybody and uh, Father Hogan doing the as well, you're all good to go. Yes, I need to check the uh, inside and out of this place to make sure there's no pixies ready to stab us in our sleep. But, okay. Oh, I, can... uh, I take. I take the uh, arrow that I caught like a real badass, and I and I throw it on the outside of the perimeter of the fence. All that right. was very impressive, very might I add. Might but uh, oh, cool. I do have a request. Yeah, well, how can I help? What's up? Uh, guess what it is? I have a head. You would like to speak with the tavern people to find out where they're going to get their taxes dirty up and get the best deal possible? Well, yeah, but like before that. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, let me get my paints out. Pick Thank a pick. 
Pick a place and pose that you like. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, where would be good? So, okay, in front of this bush. I'm going to drag the head over in front of this bush. And then I'm going to put it on the ground because it's all big and massive. And then I'm going to hike my leg up on it like Captain Morgan style. And then I'm going to have <laughs> my hand on my hip. And then I'm going to give a real like badass serious look and then let Garth do his thing. Okay, I'm going to actually walk next to uh, Rook and take out my uh, pad and a, and a charcoal, and I'm going to start sketching this. And as I'm sketching, I'm going to kind of lean over to Rook and be like, now listen, I know that anyone who was here would very clearly say that you basically one-handedly dispatched this beast with your greatsword, but um, that's not the story that I'm going to tell. How, <laughs> However... <laughs> um, between you and me, you did a fantastic job. I'm very impressed. And uh, uh, I, I have a feeling like I'm going to look for a way to make it up to you. But as far as this owl bear goes, isn't it great, Wink, that Cinder, Wink, Wink, did such a heroic thing and took out a, a grotesque cursed owl bear, basically by herself, Wink, Wink. I, I kind of hear this this extremely subtle conversation happening over here and uh, i'm basically like listen if anybody asks me what happened i'm gonna tell them the truth but other than that do what you gotta do if any if anyone asks you what really happened here today then i didn't do my job properly and i think that's probably okay <laughs> um rook's gonna look over at your your drawing perhaps you should make the the head smaller People might think you're just a bad artist. Oh, like a like a like a perspective thing. Do yeah. I hear any of this? This, this robot's funny. Uh, roll me a perception with disadvantage, as we know what Cinder is doing right now, and you would be distracted. Yep, you are correct, sir. Uh, disadvantage perception. Yeah. Okay. No, you're just trying to get that pose down. <laughs> okay. So what uh, what if I make Cinder's head a little bit bigger so people will just assume you draw I... big heads? But I just that's like that's my thing. I draw big it's heads. Just characters. You were, were not making a character over my shit. Perhaps you could also draw her sitting in a tiny cart. <laughs> <laughs> like she's in a tiny cart, and her hobby is that she likes to collect owl bear heads. <laughs> So as you're all doing this, a small halfling man bursts out of the town hall. Ah, uh, is, is it, is every, and he's like hiding in the door frame, kind of half peeking his head out. Uh, is everything God? I, I heard some muffling of, of a louder voice. Uh, is everything taken care of? With, uh, without stopping my sketching, I'm going to say, uh, Mr. Mayor, we, uh, we've heard some things about this town. Uh, were you part of a deal? Huh? A deal? N no, we no deal. I deal with who? I deal with many type of merchants. I make trading options. Uh, you know, storing uh, merchandise within the warehouse. Uh, I have many different types of contracts. What specifically are you wondering about? Okay, um, the stick on the the floor and play a deal with the Fae. Yeah, the kind where you're. The souls of your the people of your town are at risk. Uh, me, me, me personally, no, I, I have no. I, they came to the town and they, they told us that we're, they're taking what is theirs. I never fully understood. We, we tried to fight back, but we were just not equipped for this. Uh, that's why we asked for uh, the holy order to uh, help us out. But uh, well, and then you know that failed, and that's why we're just you know it's people like you just need to usually leave because they haven't been able to fight back. I understand. And I believe you. Um, we've been told um, by a disembodied head coming from the mouth of a dead owlbear, I'm sure you understand, that um, a deal was struck and uh, we have two days. Now, I tried to find out if it was two calendar days or 48 hours, and they weren't clear on that. So clearly whoever we're dealing with here is not a real stickler for, for detail. But um, what what... what 
I think has happened is um, we've thrown our lot in with this town, Mr. Mayor, and, and we're going to help you and we're going to solve this problem. I, I'm sure you I'm sure you understand, though, what that means is uh, we're putting ourselves in great danger. And uh, and and that's fine. I mean, as you can tell, we're capable and, and looking forward to doing it. But we're going to have to ask some unfortunate, uncomfortable questions to get to the bottom of this. Uh, and and I and I hope you're going to help us as much as we can. He looks at all the rest of you to gauge kind of your reactions to all this, and he goes, well, "Yes, anything, anything, and everything I can tell you. I, I'll do my best." Um, and he kind of looks around, and all of a sudden, he asks all of you. You all, you all seem to be able to, is, is there any, any of them around? Can, can you see any of them? Um, There's one right behind you. <laughs> he slams the door and you hear pitter patters. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, I believe Father Holgram was beckoning us back into his, the temple to, to discuss these very matters. Yes. How, do Am I the only one who can cast a spell called D Detect Magic? Yeah. I don't have it. Okay. Um, I don't know how many more first level spells I have. I might have one left. I'm not sure. Um, spell slots for the day. But because uh, I reset them after two adventures ago, not thinking thinking that we were going to get a long rest. And so I don't know how much I used up. But, um, but I'll have to cast that to check to see if there's any pixies around inside the... Uh, inside the uh, Temple of Unity, which is where I think we should stay for the time being. Agreed. Okay, Cinder, I have everything I need here for this painting. Uh, the sketch is done. I can uh, I can work on it more without you posing. Uh, can I see it? Yeah, of course you can. What does it look like when I look at it? It looks like one of my excellent drawings of you with an owl, but grotesque large owl bear's head, mm -hmm. uh, and there's no cart, and your head is a normal size. <laughs> Rolling performance. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> Just a second to do. Oh, control no. All right. Is anybody else doing anything this while they're going over critiquing Gar's? Uh, Artistry. Masterful works. <laughs> hey, um, Rook would like to yep. uh, split off and oh, go out. Yes. Sorry. Yep. Finish her. Uh, go uh, gather up some some like a big old armful of the iron chips that are sitting outside of town. It will take you some time to go get them if you'd like, but uh, COVID you saw did have a bucket of them. Uh. Convid will be looking for the pawn shop. Okay. Uh, yep. We're looking around to see where he is in relation to the pawn shop. Because I already know where it is, right? As we walked yeah, by. You already know where it is. Yep. Wait, did you just say poncho? Poncho. Oh, I thought you said poncho. I was like, where did a poncho come from? Well, you, you know how every small town has one poncho? <laughs> <laughs> just one. <laughs> Sorry. You need to look for it. You got to find it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so just keep track of everybody. So, uh, Rook, you go to the... So, what I'll do is we don't need this map anymore. We'll go back to town. So, you guys are all here. Father Hogan's. So, Rook, you want to go to the front of town, and you want to go get the chips. Yes. So here. All right, so you and uh, Colvett would be going the same direction uh, towards the Wobbly Shanty, which is before, the pawn shop. Before I go... Oh, I'm going to ask Cinder if she wants to go to the pawn shop because I owe her a flask of oil. You do? Um, I do want to go to the... Mm, yeah. Uh, I basically have to lug this owlbear head everywhere I go uh, uh, until I do that. But I would also... I might... I kind of want to, uh, to be honest, I kind of want to get my uh, crossbow bolts uh, basically um, tipped in iron. I haven't talked I haven't to the blacksmith yet or anything yet. like that, so I don't know if I'm going to need iron. I, I don't want to necessarily take them from you. I might be able to get them 
Yeah, actually, I might not because they seem very protective about their iron. Um, you can use mine. Yeah. I'm not using it for anything. Will you give me some? Absolutely. And okay. I already know the blacksmith. We're good friends. Oh, oh yeah. I You make friends very easily. Um, yeah. Uh, I I do want to go to the pawn chip. Pawn chip? Pawn shop. Um, poncho. <laughs> I do want to go to the poncho, for sure. Uh, I... You know what? Yeah, let's go. And I'm just gonna, like, grab the owlbear head and, like, drag it along with me. Okay. I will, I'll, I'll try to drag the, uh, uh, hide, or I guess it's not hide, it's a whole body. Somebody want to help me with this body? <laughs> um, uh... At least just stash it somewhere that's not in the middle of the road. I think, it, I think it'd be worth finding a, a leather worker to, uh, to skin and tan this for us. Is Father Hogum still around? Father Hogum looked at you guys doing your shenanigans and just shook his head and went back into the church. Okay, like, you know, information and you're just all like, paint me. Yeah, well, I mean, I am to be painted. Well, look at this. But uh, <laughs> if we, maybe if we can like drag it inside his fence, I don't think anybody's going to touch it there. No. Yeah, okay. And I, I'm gonna, I'm, I can help you with that. I'm, I'm kind of strong. I'm going to be sticking around with Father Hogan and like talking to him about um, yeah. some stuff. So, Same. if you guys want to go do your like, so it sounds like you need a pawn shop, uh, the leather worker, and, and the blacksmith. The blacksmith at the tavern. Yeah. Well, can I? May well, maybe I'll just we'll leave the body in Father Hogan's like little thing, and then I'll come back and do that head thing later. Or I don't um, know taxidermy. Does it like have to be super fresh? But here's the other pretty here, fresh. It has to be like fairly fresh. Uh, the other thing is, I if there's an a pix if there's an invisible, pi if there's an invisible pixie hanging onto the owlbear and we take it across the fence, there's a small chance we've just ruined yeah, all our hard work. I, I think I'd be more inclined to put it in an alleyway and cover it with something like a something burlap. Okay. Should, uh, should we check Father Hogum's place for like weird ass pixies before we do this, or do you want me to go in with there, or? Were they invisible last time? I don't remember. They they do they do roll invisible, yeah. And you detected that, right? That's correct. Okay. Do do we want to do that first to make sure this is like a safe spot before we all go do our own shit? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Okay, let's go do that. All okay, Garth and me, we can go in. We'll do a survey. You guys, you can do your thing. I'll shoot anything that's in our way. And then we'll make sure this is a safe spot. Okay. Yeah. So what we'll yeah. do first is Rook. Rook, you said you're heading to the front of town to go get chips. Yes. All right. So we will do Rook first. So Rook, as you head through town, you see that people, they were in their homes. You see every once in a while people in the windows who are just watching you. Their heads turning, just following you in your direction. Um. You, you can do with the, that what you will. As you head to the front, though, you see uh, that there is still that very small woman who is there just uh, putting iron rods into the uh, ground near the entrance of the town. What do you do? Um, so Rook is going to uh, try and, and feign looking angry and uh, just kind of pissed off lookingly uh, scoop up some of the iron chips, like shaking his head and stuff to make it look like he's very unimpressed. All right. Roll me just general charisma. Or an intimidation, whatever you'd like. All right. We'll use that. That's fine. Uh, Oh, y'all, if you're trying to pretend emotions, that is a good one. Yes. So as you are sitting there picking up the chips, shaking your head and looking very disgruntled, do you see the old lady? She looks at you for a moment, but then she sees you're very upset. So she kind of like scoots a little bit further away and starts to hammer in another one of the iron rods. Anything else you'd like to do besides pick up the iron chips? No, I won't harass her. That's fine. Okay, no problem. So you start to head back into town. 
All right. Uh, so the rest of you all went to Father Hogum's to do the uh, checking for fairies. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, do you? How are you guys checking for fairies? Okay, I'm going to cast Detect Magic, and I'm going to have Father Hogum just have walk me through the entire place so I can look in all the nooks and crannies where they could be hiding, and I'm going to ask him to uh, be very thorough so we don't miss anything. All right. So as you are detecting magic with them, are you inside the church or are you doing like a whole search of the grounds? Uh, everything inside the fence. So Everything within inside the fence. So taking your time, thir thoroughly searching, you do find one little glowing speck of light that seems to be floating around. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Is it inside or, the, or outside? Uh, it is within the... Tr it, it, within, and uh, how are you going to watch it? Are you going to do anything right away? As soon as I see it, I'm going to sort of grab whatever's closest to me and throw it at it. Okay. As you throw it, just roll me a general d20 plus your dex. Because you see, it's following Father Hogan. That ain't gonna do it. That's plus uh, a bit, though. All right. So as you throw something, you ping a Father Hogan right in the back of the head. What? What are you doing? So that's a six, all in. Uh, sorry, I just uh, found what we're looking for. And uh, I'm going to say to Cinder, uh, it's it's here. Uh, I'm going to try and make it easy. To is there a uh, is there cloth around anywhere? Whatever you'd have on you, as you guys are kind of out in the, uh, you aren't in the church. You're in the uh, the courtyard. Oh, it's in the courtyard. Okay, well yep. then I'll just grab I'll grab some dirt off the ground and I'll throw a cloud of dirt at it. Okay. Sorry, I thought I thought we were inside. Uh, no, Father Hogan went inside the church and then he started to search the courtyard because he's doing his own search, trying to see if there's anything within. Okay, so I'm just I'm just gonna throw a big old cloud of uh, dirt in the area. Okay. Uh, everybody can roll me a perception check. Whoever would be searching with Garth and Father Hogan. I have a question, kind of um, involving that. Oh, sorry. I still have a disadvantage. Yes. Uh, just okay. So, just regarding my crimson right. Now, um, that technically stays active unless I bring it down. Um. Yep. And I haven't done that yet. Yet. Oh, so that healing wouldn't have done anything. Right, because, because it my, reduces your max, my yeah. max hit point. So technically, yeah. that healing wouldn't have done anything, and I still would have just been bleeding. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Sorry, that was kind of my bad. So uh, I guess he wasted the healing kit because it wouldn't have come back. We can just roll that off. So Emery, sorry. Interesting part is, is you wrap up. Uh, you wrap up. You do your handiwork as a medic. The weird part is, is as the bandage is on the arm and you've done everything you can and the gauze to patch it up, you still see a little faint of red coming back through the bandage as the bleeding does not seem to stop. All right. The only one. So none of you notice, but Garth, you see it. All of a sudden, there is this little outline of a body for a quick moment as the dirt uh, cloud passes through it. You see a little outline of the fairy. I mean... If no one else sees it, I'm just going to shoot a vicious mockery at it, just being like, you little fucker, I'm going to get you eventually. <laughs> you yep. little fucker. All of a sudden, the little glowing is gone. Okay, let's keep... Now, it was following Father Hogum, yeah? Yep, and we'll just say you you were all doing a search of the ground. You just noticed it probably uh, like the midway. So uh, the, whatever was inside seemed to be following Father Hogum. You don't see any else with your detect magic. Okay, so we can assume that there 
I mean, I'm, I'm already assuming that the fence is working and I'm assuming that there's nothing else in there. I'm making a lot of assumptions, but I mean, we got to move forward. So I think they're probably safe assumptions to make. Safe assumption, it seems. Father Hogum seems to be more at ease now that the fence is repaired. He was very stressing out when it was broken, but as soon as it was put back up, he seemed to ease a bit more. All right. Uh, anybody want to do anything? Uh, so during the time of you searching, since Rook just went straight to uh, there to grab the ships and walked right back by the guys who would do a whole search, uh, Rook would be back. So what's everybody doing? Father Hogum is just searching, but doesn't seem to be locating anything. I'll say to Garth, uh, when you talk to Father Hogum, ask him if the town keeps uh, ancient legal writings anywhere, and ancient records, annals, anything that we can read to figure out what the original deal was. Uh, for sure, and I'll see if there's anyone old enough that we can actually ask in person, too. Right. And then I'll gesture to cinder and ask if she wants to hit the tavern try to hang this thing up uh yeah are we going to the tavern first and then the poncho or unless you want to carry that thing around well no i was gonna leave it but i don't know how fresh it's gotta be or the leather worker might be able to do the taxidermy for the town you might want to take everything to the leather worker first uh i'll look at emrest do you want to do you want to do the leather worker Sorry, I was eating a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, um, yeah, sorry, did we um, have a chance to discuss anything with Father Hogan yet? Or No, we... that's no, still no, in the yet. works. No, they changed their plan 180 in two seconds flat, so... We want to go <laughs> shopping, okay? <laughs> we haven't had enough of it. Sure, I mean, we don't want these... Uh, this carcass to rot so if we could find a leather worker drop it off and then come back that would probably be a good idea yeah, yeah okay let's and then yeah we have multiple bodies to try and drag this along i guess where's the do we know where the leather worker is no you only know the blacksmith uh great well, we could just ask father hogan i'm gonna yeah. stay with father hogan you do that and, you're you'll be his best bud and but we'll ask him uh where the leather worker is before you guys go So I will approach Father Hogan and say, I've used my superior magic detective vision to look around and I don't see any more invisible pixies. I think the I think that the damage is gone for now. The damage the, the danger is gone for now. Um, we'd like to get this carcass dealt with. Um, would you be so kind as to tell us where the leather worker is? Well we're a very small town, um the the blacksmith is very well versed in many things. He has to tend leather for making the reinforcements for his armor and the well the underside so that it doesn't cause any issues with the person who's wearing it. So that would be the closest thing we have to a uh, a full on leather worker. Oh, I understand. And uh, does he also do the taxidermy that I saw in the tavern? Oh, that one there. No, that would be the actual uh, tavern owner. He he likes to hear tales, and if people bring him a fresh, well, as fresh as can be, that he can still deal with it, uh, he stuffs them and hangs them along the wall with a story. Am I around to hear this? Am I right? I don't know where we all are. I don't know where you all are either. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm real close to Garth when this happens, and um, I'm going to look at Garth and be like, I can't, I can't spread my tail by myself yeah i will happily spread the tail just get him the head and promise him the tail so that we don't have to worry about it anymore okay so um, can you bring him the tail when you bring the picture yes okay we'll make we'll we can make an event of it be like the tales of cinder and it'll be like a big reveal with the head and a picture We'll tell the tavern owner that uh, the tale is being masterfully crafted as we speak. Ah, yes. Masterfully crafted. I like that. We'll do that. I like that. Okay. So we're going to go see the blacksmith then. Yeah? Yes. You guys go to the blacksmith, go to the pot shop, go to the tavern, and... Are you going to be okay by yourself? Like, can you enter... What are you going to do? I have... I'm going to have tea. 
You have tea with Father Hogum? I assume it's going to be tea. I don't know. All right, just okay. Yeah, just be safe. Just it's not a big town. Scream if you get in trouble. Scream if you get in trouble. I'll be fine. Deal. All right. Good. All right. So we know what Garth is doing. We know what Cinder's doing. Uh, Emrys, Calvid, uh, what are you doing? I'm taking Cinder to the blacksmith. Okay. Yeah, so I guess we're just going to basically drag the head and the carcass to the No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring out what's going on first. So, Emmerich, are you going with them? Yeah, I'm helping lug the, the corpse. All right, so as you are lugging the corpse out, Rook, you would have returned at this time. What would you like to do? Are you going into the church or are you following the dragging corpse? No, I was also going to be going to the blacksmith, so... Okay. Like, no problem. I was going to say, Rook, you, Rook, you know the blacksmith, your friends. Perhaps you can help us get a good deal. <laughs> You're made of blacksmith material. So, since the majority is going there, first off, we will start with you all arriving at the Obsidian Furnace. You hear the clanging of metal. As you go uh, into the main part of the building, you feel the hot temperature rise as a blast of hot air hits you as you open the door. I'll gesture Cinder in. Do I see the blacksmith? Mm -hmm. Hi, friend. Oh, hello. Uh, how how can I help you? Uh, we have a couple things. So first off, and I'll like plop the owl owl bear head down like in front of me. I'm like, do you taxidermy things? Oh no, I, I I mostly deal with the the most I do is skin uh, type of that, but making things look like they're alive that's far outside my purview. Okay, um, I could make it look like a helmet. Uh, no, that's fine. I'll talk to the tavern about that. I hear they're pretty uh good with the taxidermy and all that fun stuff. Um, I do have some other things though. Uh, are you able to make me um, iron-tipped crossbow bolts? Mm, I should be able to do that. Uh, I, I have use of iron. Like, how are you looking to just dip your original arrows or crossbow bolts into uh, slag and iron, or are you actually looking to get crafted tips? Um, in my exper in my experience, I don't know anything about iron. So, uh, what would you suggest would be better? Oh well, if I had to make a request, of course, fully iron tipped would be best. Because uh, you, you, you make more that. money that way. No, it's it's not about the money. It's about the quality. If you just coat them in the arrow, if it will, after one or two uses, the iron may just chip right off. Ah, okay, you'd okay. okay. Sal you'd be able to salvage the, the iron arrow tips. For right, sure. right. Okay, yeah. Uh, so what would you need to do that? Well, I would need time to craft the arrow tips. Are you, are you meaning in payment or? I mean, yeah, Material? I want to know how much it costs. I want to know, do I need to supply the iron or will you? Well, if you can supply the iron, then, of course, your price would be cheaper. But if you are looking for me to supply it, then it would just be a part of the cost. Mm. I'll kind of side glance at Kelvin and be like, what would it cost me to um, have you supply it? Uh, how many arrows are you looking to uh, make, exactly? Mm. Mm, ten? Yeah. Sorry, are Sorry. you making arrows or bolts? Weren't you using a light crossbow? Uh, yeah, light like crossbow bolts. You're looking to make 10? Um, uh, that's about a half bundle. I could do that. Uh, you're probably looking about uh, two gold. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, how much? So for 20, it would be four? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah then let's do 20. He looks at your reaction and goes, they're, they're just iron chipped arrows it, there don't be a, any enchantment or anything like that it's just yeah. instead of steel the iron that's fine do, yeah do that okay uh, 
He kind of does a little drat face as he just realized he could have charged you more. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> all right, so four gold pieces, uh, iron tipped crossbow bolts. Uh, that'd probably take me. Got all of the iron. Uh, first thing in the morning, I should have them ready. Why don't you? Why don't you double that order? Um, and and maybe give uh, another bundle to uh, to Garth. Oh yeah, he does have a crossbow, eh? He was trying to shoot it out that window. It was super cute. Crossbows of a different size, though. Is that a concern? Are they? I no. Hand crossbow and light crossbow. They take different size ammunition. Yes, the the, the tips of the heads are quite different. Yeah, he has a hand. You know I have exactly. a light. I can, can make both. That's fine. I just need to know the quantities of each. You know what? I'll give him a present because he was so good with my picture earlier. Um, how much for twenty more hand crossbow bolts for that? Four gold pieces again. So that'd be eight gold pieces for twenty for the light, uh, twenty for the hand. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. I will place that order. All right. Right off eight gold pieces. Yeah. Right just curious. Um, do your skills include master, masterfully, masterfully crafted items for an extra Mas cost? Uh, what I level of master craft weapons? I have a couple of items that I'm very keen on, but um, once again, I'm not any type of janter. I can do the best I can with the steel I have. Um, I'm just wondering if, uh, if, if you were able to create the, if for an extra cost, uh, create these bolts masterfully crafted, which then would, I, I believe, allow them to be, um, perhaps enchanted by someone. What does that mean? Well, um, if you're looking for... Wait, what does that mean? Uh, I mean, my understanding that you have to have a high quality item, a master for master for master crafted item, for it to be uh, susceptible to enchantment, to magical enchantments. So with it, you need a higher quality weapon, usually for enchantment. People who comes in is like, here's this crappy goblin sword, enchant this for me. They'll go, well, it'll shatter as soon as I enchant this. Um, and that's why like arrows that are usually enchanted, they have like a nice sheen to them. They're very well crafted. Uh, they can take the the withstanding force of an enchantment. So what he's asking is more well crafted arrows that if they have to be enchanted. Mm. Okay, okay. Is uh, he able to do so? Oh, I guess for sorry. that, for that, um, it would definitely take me more time. I need to find the purest iron that I have available. That's probably going to be for just a twenty bushel. That's going to be almost. 15 gold pieces per 20. Okay, I just thought I would bring it up. I mean, it's up to you. You're, yeah, you're, let's uh, do it all. Cinder. Let's do it all. Let's do all the good stuff. So that'd be 30 gold pieces, but it's going to take me at least till tomorrow night, if not the morning after. Yeah, that's after. fine. So I owe you 30 gold? We have 48 hours. Or maybe two calendar days. He wasn't clear on that. <laughs> Two business days? Is it the weekend? <laughs> All right, so 30 gold pieces. Uh, he is going to make you craft a master crafted iron arrows. If I gave you 60 gold pieces, would that speed that up? Uh, Never letting you go shopping ever again. Yeah, well, you you left me on my own. That Terrible is not your fault. I, like, I literally need you. <laughs> you left me on my own, so. Yes. Of course, uh, it it be quicker for me to acquire the iron that I I need. Um, I can buy some stock that uh, may have been held back within the warehouse. Okay, um, time yes. frame, go. Uh, uh, midday tomorrow. Midday? What is that? Like noon? Yeah, it, it, when the sun meets the peak. So yes, about noonish. Yeah. All right, so you owe him 60 gold pieces. Sure he takes it. Do. You see he takes what he was working on, throws it to the corner of the room, and starts to take off his apron. Well, does anybody need anything else? I, I, I have a time frame. Uh, yeah, uh, we do have one more item here. Uh, obviously, it's it's not uh, priority at the moment for you, but um, 
outside the uh, the door of your of your um, building here, we have a large owl bear carcass that I'm wondering if uh, you have the capability of skinning and and tanning its hide. No, we have to take that to the tavern. They're the taxidermy people. No, no, no. this is just the this is just the corpse. We just want the hide done. We don't, oh. we don't need taxidermy. We just need leather working done on it. Uh, okay. I I can work on that, of course. Um, uh, this will be taking priority, so I probably won't be able to start until tomorrow afternoon. I can. Uh, what are you exactly looking to do? Because I can skin it, try it out. What What is the end goal? Well, how much material would you wager is there, um, and and what could be made out of it? He hangs up his apron on, and he starts to walk outside. And oh, was that was that all the commotion was? Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, I don't know if I should be working on this. Uh, and he kind of looks it over. His curiousness is getting the better of him. Uh, is there somebody prob- better for the job? No, it's not so much better. This is one of the creatures that has been causing issues, and I don't know if me working on it is going to put a target on my back. Perhaps working on it would be better than leaving it outside of your building. Yeah, because we will. <laughs> All right. All right, fine. You, you paid me well. I, I can work on it. Um, This here, uh, probably about... Uh, 10 feet, 15 feet worth of material. And what, what might, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of what could be made out of such things. What, what would you I can make? Bracers, cloaks, uh, chest piece, uh, probably if you're looking at multiple things, uh, a pair of bracers and, uh, a cloak, a pair of bracers, a chest piece, uh, boots and a chest piece, bracers, boots, and maybe a, a slight collar type thing. Oh. I need to know what you need me to make. You could have owlbear feet. <laughs> uh, I personally wouldn't mind a, a cloak made out of it if, mm. if nobody else objects. Mm-hmm. No, that would be stunning. All right, well, um, uh, cloak, I can do that. Uh, you're just looking to get the cloak out of it. Um, yeah, and perhaps if whatever's left over, we could simply store and, and have you make something else out of it another time. Depending on what it is, uh, I, I, I will give you the remaining bolts left and you can decide to do with it after, or yeah. I can buy off what remains from you. It, it's up to you. Uh, to make a cloak of this, uh, depending on what quality you want, we're probably looking at at least, this is a custom job, uh, 13 gold pieces uh, just for the cloak. Very well. Um, how much for the best quality cloak? Uh, it's, once again, time-wise, uh, probably about uh, 27 gold pieces. Because as I'll have to do a custom job and close down my shop for the day. And That's acceptable. When's um, of that going to be ready, though? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about... Let's just time get those, bolt, those bolts done, and you know, if there's time in a, in, in a town, I say, <laughs> under my breath, left, uh, we can look at getting the cloak done. Well, yeah. the cloak, if you want me to start, you can do a down payment. It's going to take me at least three days as I have to dry out and uh, temperament the, the leather. It is not like crafting an arrowhead. It, is, it takes time, lots of time. I'll of give Emrys a look and be like, almost like, do you think, actually, I'll just say, do you think we'll be here in two days? Or, hmm. uh, I think I would like to see the townspeople here alive in two days, so I, I would hope it would be around. Wait, what? Uh, nothing! Don't worry about it. Don't worry should I, about should it. I be, should I be... Is, is there, should I go see the mayor and he's getting all no, jittery? No, 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 no. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it, my dear. We've like, don't worry. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna roll a d3. <laughs> One of you oh are God. going to We're roll a deception with advantage. We're the worst crew to be doing this. So one Cinder, two Emery, uh, three Calvin. Wait, what do you want? Perception roll. Perception? No, no, one second. It's me. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, so it is going to be Emery. Emery, roll oh, me a deception God. with advantage. Thank God. Deception with advantage? Yeah, because they're helping you do this lot. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad it wasn't me. <sighs> uh, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't throw around people's threats of death. That, uh, oh, or you, you did. Oh, and he's like holding his chest a little bit like <gasps> honey <laughs> you're home. okay we just didn't know if we were gonna stay here for two days or no oh, you, you you said that it, okay i miss, must have misunderstood you, you i thought i heard are people going to be live today uh, no sorry, i just, just meant are we going to be here in two days it's okay yeah. all right he calms down i, I pull out my, my person and uh give him 10 gold uh, will this suffice as a down payment Oh, yes. Uh, that's almost half the payment uh, up front, so I can take that, and uh, we can we will do the rest, uh, the 17 gold pieces, once it's completed. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So you two have your orders placed. Uh, Tomorrow, I... midday, 40 crossbow bolts. Can I just... Uh, can I... It, it doesn't have to be a whole big roleplay thing. Can I ask for just more general crossbow, crossbow bolts? Yep, you can definitely do that. Uh, generalized crossbow bolts yeah. will be... Because I haven't been super good at keeping track of those, and I'm pretty yep. sure I'm probably out. <laughs> um, another pack of 20 would be one gold piece. Okay, perfect. I'll Yeah, I'll do that. All right, no problem. So you got 40 masterworks on order, one bear coke, uh, rook, we're going to uh, rook in Calvid. Anything you want to do at the blacksmith? Um, no. Rook would like to ask the blacksmith if he can just use his forge. Well, um... <sighs> I don't really usually let random people use my forge. May I ask what you're going to be using it for? I'd like to make an iron weapon. And I'd also like to keep an eye on you to make sure nothing sees this owlbear and comes after you. Oh. Well, I can craft you an iron. Do you mean use my forge as in I produce a weapon for you? I can do it myself. You are... Working on arrows. Roll me a persuasion check. Because you guys have paid him a lot of... With advantage, because you guys have paid him a lot of gold. Should I just roll again at normal? Yeah, just roll one more time. Yep. Let's roll a guidance on him. Oh, never mind. He rolled 18. <laughs> 18. So, um, you, you can't... Uh, I have to do some work. As long as you have to wait for me to return after I procure the iron I need um, for this order, looking over at Cinder. Um, but if you stay within my eyesight, and if I see you doing anything wrong, I will stop you. Um, if you agree to those herbs, I guess you could use my forge. But under my supervision! Of course. Anything. All right. Um, do you have iron yourself? Uh, Rook is currently has a big old armful of the iron chips from outside of the town. He starts laughing at you. Um, you would need... Are you looking to coach your weapon, or are you crafting a weapon? Crafting. You're going to need much more iron than that, uh, sir. Uh, I can procure... I can give you the iron to craft that weapon. Since you are going to do the work. What, are, what type of weapon are you crafting? Uh... Glaive. Okay, one sec. Also, I am proficient with with Smith's tools. Yep, uh, I saw that on your sheet. That's I was looking that up as we were talking. So, do 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 glaive. It's basically, just a long blade at the top, and the rest is wood shaft, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I'm looking at it. So he is going to charge you three gold pieces for the material because a glaive is normally twenty gold pieces, but. Once again, it's the wood and everything like that. So he's going to charge you three gold pieces for the material, and then you're the time and the labor. Thank you. Greatly appreciated, Master Blacksmith. I'll just let... I have to leave, and he's kind of pushing you all out. I have to go procure the iron. Um, And then after that, uh, I should be back within the next hour or so if you, if you want to start work right away. talking to you rook yes all right and with that if no one else is doing anything blacksmith we're gonna go over to garth with father hogan uh 
All right. Has he calmed a little bit? We have the perimeter searched and the building searched. Yes. Yeah, so as uh, the as they were started heading out, you see he's starting to kind of clean up a little bit. Um, he finds his way back into the main chapel. If you uh, are are you staying for chat, or are you going with the rest of your friends? No, Father. I wanted to have a chance to speak with you a little bit before while they're doing sort of the the business of adventuring. You see, he very warily sits down, like on the front pew before the altar. Come, take your seat. I'll have a talk, chat with you. What What can I tell you? Um, is there a Is there an all god altar at the beginning at the front of the chapel? Yeah, there it is. There's just like an altar. There is actually no um, one symbol on it. There are many different symbols of religions also spewed across it. Okay, I'm going to, uh, before I sit down, I'm going to say, uh, go up to the front, say a prayer to um, my God in the form of casting guidance on myself. And I'm going to uh, increase my insight. Uh, and then I'm going to go sit down in, the, in sort of a pew near him. No problem. You do see, though, there is a tab on the back to the god of Azuran, but it seems the chat, the altar is used for any type of religion. So okay. you are. What can I tell you? Well, there's a lot of questions about what's going on here, uh, and I think that you might be one of the best people to answer most of them. How long have you been here in town? All my life. For all. 70 years. Were you here when they made the deal with the Fae? <laughs> it kind of gives a little chuckle. <laughs> no. No, no one even talks to me about that. Half the people don't even remember. I don't, I wasn't here. My father wasn't here. And it's just been a story that's been passed down from my great, great grandfather. So it's a very, very old deal. Yes, as far as I could tell, the city seemed to have some issues back in the past. The rumors, well, pass over, well, the story passed over through my family is that the town, the town's king, because this used to actually be deep in the forest, the main city. The town's king, or ruler, Made a deal with the Fae to save them from the onslaughting attacks from the orcs. And they protected them from the orcs. Sorry, what was that? And the Fae protected them from the orcs. A rumor is, is that the, the ruler was in. A rumor is, is with that some that type the, of. The ruler was in. The force is some that, type of, the, that you see behind us grew larger, more robust. They help protect the civilian, the citizens, as the orcs, as they tried to progress to the forest. They were attacked. They were dismayed. Their onslaught stopped as they couldn't make their way through the woods. So the town was saved. Yes. There was a price to be paid. All the the ruler told the town was that one day, as long as the bloodline was kept through the rule, they had friends with the Fae. But who knows what that meant? Oh, I think it means that your halfling mare might be more of a problem than we originally thought. How so? Well, before I answer what I'm thinking, Tell me, does anyone from the bloodline of the original king still reside in the town? The original king in the bloodline, he further expanded. His kingdom became quite large and robust. He no longer ruled over this region alone. The last I remember was the bloodline was in the, lar the capital of Zobek, was where he took up his reign. Uh, where if I wanted to find a group of merchants ruling, I would. I've heard rumors that the merchants guilds got rid of the hierarchy within Zobek. And so the deal was broken. We're not talking about one town that's under siege. We're talking about a nation. 
That, I can't speak for that. All I know is what is happening here. Tell me, uh, do you love the people of this town? Well, they are my people. And you would make sacrifices for them if it came to that? As much as I can. You would see, Garth, that actually, if you look at his hands, his hands are all cut up, and there are wounds, like, everywhere. Probably him dumping the chips on a daily basis and spreading them out has really messed up his hands. You know, technically, uh, I'm a mercenary. I don't, so... uh, I don't have a town like this, you know? Like you have. Must be hard wandering from place to place. But I heard you mercenaries make good cord. And he gives you like an eyebrow and starts to stand up walking around the church. I would trade it all for a little plot of land to look after. But, uh, you know, I don't think that... Uh, I would be very happy if I made a deal like that. It's funny. It's complicated, right? It is. Giving you a curious look. I'm sorry, son. All I have in my name is everything you see around me. I can make no deals like that. And with that saying, we'll jump over to the rest of them back at the uh, pawn shop. All right. So. This time I'll take the lead, square up, throw my hood back, all that sort of stuff that I do, and confidently stride into the pawn shop. All right, you stride into the pawn shop. You see the merchant behind the counter. This is the first time you walked into the pawn shop, I believe. Yes. Yep, so you see a small little halfling woman behind the counter. Oh, hi there. How can I help you? Welcome to the Wobbly Shanty. Oh, you're all very new faces. How can I help you? I'll take a look around. Can I see any gems or anything like that on the shelves? You do not see any on the shelves. Uh, with this here, you see there are randomized items, um, you know, standard uh, feed for animals uh there are like one or two med kits on the shelf um mostly things are valuable she has in a little glass case in front of her uh you see uh like one or two potions um and sort of that but you see no open gems just sitting on a shelf anywhere good practice uh do i see any oil flasks or anything like that uh oil flasks yes you would definitely find them they're near the lanterns Okay, uh, then I'll address the halfling after a cursory moment of inspection and ask, do you happen to trade in genstones in this place? Oh, a keen eye! Uh, is everybody in there? Yeah. She'll make a joke of looking to buy maybe a ring per chance? Looking at Cinder. No, I, I want will, oil. I will also give Cinder a sidelong look and nod subtly and then add a, a wink. Uh, what? I yeah, want at oil. The halfling, at the halfling. I will do that to the halfling, sorry. Oh, I'm so... Oh, she looks at, like embarrassed. I'm so... Of course, we sell just normal gems for normal everyday uses. And she gives you a wink. Yeah, call it. And I'll say, what do you have in diamonds? Oh, the keen eye. Uh, dear, the oil is. She looks at Cinder. Dear, the oil, the oil is over there. Uh, just, just look over there. Uh, you should be able to find it, no problem. And she kind of like goes under the counter, trying to hide what she's pulling out, going towards Calvid. Uh, you see, there are a couple rings that have uh, diamonds in them. You see some that have like topazes, rubies. Uh, they're not amazing quality, but they're not bad. Can I? I actually visually tell how much they're worth. I'll make an investigation. Uh, right on. Investigation. 
Yeah, with a 19. You see most of them are lower quality. Uh, maybe like 25, 30 here gold pieces. You do see one that is very valuable, about 100 gold pieces. And you see one that for the diamond is uh, 50 gold pieces of worth. I'll point out, so those are both diamonds, you are saying? Uh, these ones are diamonds on rings. Okay, uh, I'll point at the 50 gold piece diamond and subtly give her a eyebrow raise as a question. As though I'm trying to hide from Cinder what I'm what I'm asking. Of course, of course. Uh, this one here, uh, it, it's it's one of my my better stock. Of course, uh, very very good eye you have. Um, yes, I can definitely uh, sell you this one here. Is is there any other ones that are interesting you? I'll I'll take a cursory look and say, I'm only of middling income. So the. And I'll indicate the the hundred piece. That's a little a little too much for me. But this, and I'll indicate the fifty gold piece. This is is perfect. I think she'd really appreciate this. And I'll say that last bit in a whisper. Oh, you, I'm sorry. You're hit on hitting on hard times and trying to propose to your loved one. Oh, so sweet. Uh, this one here, I could probably sell you for about sixty gold pieces. Sixty five. And I'll just nod, done, and slide her 65 gold in a little bag. Okay, no problem. She's super happy with this deal. <laughs> oh, she'll love it. Only the best quality. Dear, did you find the oil? I mean, yeah, I guess. You know what? <laughs> just, uh, you can take a flask or two. Um, your, your wonderful uh, cup... Companion, husband, fiance, boyfriend. Oh my god, don't worry about it. How many flasks of oil can you sell me right now? <laughs> she can sell you four. She can sell me four. And how much is that? Uh, four silver pieces. Four okay, silver pieces. you can add it to his tab. Oh no. Uh, well, we see who runs this relationship, and she kind of snickers. <laughs> Damn I'll just straight. give her a wink. Also, uh, sorry, I don't know your name. Did you tell us? No, you never asked. My name is Alice. Alice, uh, do you have nail polish? Uh, we have a couple different kinds over there. <gasps> You see a couple different colors, uh, none with sparkles, because, you know, that's a pretty big rarity. <laughs> God. All right. What do I see? Um, you see all different colors of the rainbow. Uh, some of them have a little slight sheen to them. Like when you like move it back and forth, it gives off a little bit of light, but not really sparkly or anything like that. You pick a color, you go. So they're all just, uh, I'm not about to have this conversation with a dude. Um, <laughs> they're all flat based. This yeah. is a small shanty town. <laughs> okay. So they're all mad. All right. Yeah. Um, I feel like Alice is a lady. <laughs> um, do I see, okay. Is there like a deep red one? I'm assuming there, there is. Yes. There's a deep red one. Yeah. Yeah. Be a part of the rainbow. Okay. I will take, I will pick up the red one, the orange one, um, I will take a red one, an orange one, and a black one. All right, she'll tell you that it will be one silver piece altogether for all three. Ugh. I got a break I will one. put the extra silver piece across. Okay, thank you, because I don't want to break or my gold. Hand her a full gold and call it a tip. So. All right, no problem. She's super happy about that. So you hand her 66 gold pieces overall. Dungeon Master, did you mention uh, med kits on yep. the shelves? She has med she has two med kits on the shelves. Like healer's kits? Healer kits, yep. Okay. Uh, I'll ask if I could, uh, if I could uh, peruse those kits just to make sure they're complete. Uh, no problem, dear. I got my eye on you. Yeah, they're they're full kits. And what would you uh, what would you want for these? 
Oh, those ones here, uh, they came in on the last shipment, which was a while ago. So, with them... <laughs> where are you? So, they haven't really been moving, so you're looking to get rid of them. <laughs> I smile. Well, I haven't actually had many customers, so I'm more I'm trying to get the best deal I can at the possible time so I can get future stock. And she gives you a big smile. Those would be about... Uh, Five gold pieces each. Very well. Uh, that sounds like a fair trade for me. I will. I will take them both. Okay. No problem. Anything else? Anyway. Ten uses a piece. Yes. What was that? Ten uses each. Yep. Ten uses each. Uh, Rook, do you want anything from the shop? No thanks. All right. Then we will jump back to Garth. Cool. 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 Um. I'm going to sort of take out my loot and sort of absentmindedly play, like just strum something a little bit melancholy. All right. Um, Father, I think you've misunderstood what I'm saying. I'm not asking to make a deal. I'm not trying to, to, to get something from this town. That's not my intention. Oh, I apologize. I'm... I've heard of mercenaries in the past, and those who come here for the bounties for the bandits across the road. Usually everything they want comes with a price. And you see he was he had like a little uh, a box that he was getting towards, uh, and he kind of moves his hands away from it. Um, you're not wrong to think that way. In fact, the way I introduced this idea, I, I can see why you would. But I just wanted you to know that I'm coming to you from a place of honesty, uh, from a place where um, we're sort of putting all the cards on the table, so to speak, yeah? Well, I can appreciate that. What do you need from me? This town is in a lot of trouble. Uh, and I think you are one of the few that understand truly how much trouble it's in. In, in two days, maybe sooner, there's going to be an attack that puts that owl bear, uh, I, I, I think, uh, to shame. I heard the voice. I don't know if he means all of us or it's just towards you. If, if what you've told me about the rumors of, of this uh, situation are true, and, and I think that parts great long parts of them are, you know how rumors are. Um, there's no safe place to run anywhere for any of us. This is something that's going to have to be dealt with. But um, but we're just not enough. We're not, there's not enough iron chips to build us, uh, to build a fence around this whole town. And I, and I, and I want to say that to you, knowing that that's what you've been working so hard for the last little while is. You see, he has like a look of pain in his face as he realizes this. Um, but it's not hopeless. I only bring it up because you can help these people in a way that I can't. You and what was the name of the woman who uh, was trying to do iron rods? Her name is Lady Varys. You and Lady Varys have clear vision of what's to come. And if you work together, I think you can keep people safe, keep them healthy, uh, keep keep them together in this dangerous time. We are on different sides of our beliefs, but I know we have the same goal. She just, she won't accept that she could be wrong, and I will accept that I am set in my ways. Well, we're all equally wrong because we're all equally in danger and I think that's the thing that we need to remember <sighs> Listen, my friends are going to come back eventually and we're a bit of a crew there's going to be talk we're going to laugh uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to have the gallows humor in the face of, of what's to come but I'm going to make sure that we all pull together and that we take what's happening as it comes we're, we're going to help save this town if we can well, if you will sit with me with a while, I'll prepare something to drink. 
We'll wait for your companions to get back and I may have a favor to ask of all of you and we'll see what we can do for this town. I uh, I think I like the sound of that drink. All right. So he will make the tea. You all sit and have a drink, kind of do a little banter back and forth. And if all of you head to, are you guys going to the tavern or are you guys going back to the chapel? Tavern, my, this, it needs to be on the wall. Okay. Sorry, I waited a month for this shit. It needs to be on the wall. I'll go back to the chapel. Mm -hmm. All right, so Rook goes back to the chapel. Where's everybody going? Going to the tavern. I don't care if anybody follows me. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the chapel. I think there's uh, information to oh, be known. Oh, great. You're leaving me to talk about myself. That's the worst. Okay. Well, Anybody else? No, you don't have to. <laughs> Why don't you come with, and we will get this. We will. We'll all go back together to the to the tavern. I'm sure we could all use a drink afterwards. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I don't. Is the head still gonna be good? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's only been an hour or so. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense. And we'll just all go to the tavern after. Cinder, I believe. If you're half as good at talking as you are at shooting a crossbow, you'll do fine at convincing them on your own. I'm not good at talking. I'm good at shooting a crossbow. Talking is my downfall. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, if we have to talk to them first, that's, that's fine. As long as I get this head on the wall, I don't care. Let's go. All right. Let's go save Garth. He's been alone long enough, with Father Hogan. So Garth, you see as the doors swing open and your other companions uh, come through the main chapel doors. Just in time. There's a pot of tea on. Oh great! How you been doing? Are you okay? As long as you didn't spend too much of our gold, I'm just fine. I spent my own gold. And I'm, I'm very, very good. Yeah, I know how cheap you are. It's okay. Well, I don't mean to butt in on your argument over gold, but uh, your companion here informed me that you all are looking to help if you can. Yeah, what do you know? You literally yelled out earlier in the battle, like, I know too much. Oh my god, they're after me. What do you know? Well, I know that where I know where you can find them. All right, where's that? Let's go to it. Well, deep within the woods, I, I will go out there. Kind of laughs as you said, let's go to it. I, I won't go out there. Well, no, I've we're not happy. asking you to. Let's go. Information. Come on. Cinder. What? You got something to say, Tim Man? Perhaps he could get more information out if you didn't cut him off. All right, fine. I'll shut up. And then she'll, like, lean against a wall and cross her arms. Go on. Well, the rumors... The stories I've been told during my life is that the ruler of this, what was this town, used to have a large manor far out within the woods. That was where the main city was located back long ago. That is where I believe if he were to be located anywhere, where he would be found today. The only way I know towards there is there was a large, large tree far into the woods. I've seen it many times within my nightmares. I've, since I've started to do the iron chips, I've been having vivid dreams of a woman hovering over me. She's been giving me endless nightmares I haven't been able to sleep. She stands behind this tree, and when my dream started, the tree was beautiful, very flush. As the dreams have been going on further, it's been dying, withering away. 
Every time the, the dream recurs and the tree looks more dead, she seems more pleased with herself. It's almost as if she taunts me, knowing I can do nothing but hide behind these iron gates. A mansion with an ancient king, an enchantress destroying a tree in your dreams. Yeah, I like the sound of this. This is where we need to go next for sure. Is there someone that might guide us through the woods? As you say that, he is, his face kind of uh, scruffs up and bunches up a little bit as he kind of looks a little annoyed for a moment. <sighs> if you're looking for someone to help guide to the tree, the only one I know who is able to traverse the woods or guide people through them is Lady Varys. As he kind of, you hear the tone of his voice kind of uh, a little agitated. I will, uh, I will say, just sort of, uh, uh, uh. Sorry, that was the that was the older lady that he was uh, arguing yep. with. Okay. Yeah, the one who does the iron rods. Do we have any more questions? I'll cut in and say, um, Father Hogan. Does this town keep records of agreements and legal bindings of past ages? More current, you'd have to talk to the mayor as he does most of the trade agreements and contracts that are within the town. If you're looking for past information, we'll have a small local library, but not much. Uh, we have some local books in there, but I don't know exactly what you might find. Specifically, I'm looking for mentions of this deal that your town must have made with these fae. Uh, maybe old either folk tales of the town or uh, writings along scribbles within the books, but I don't know of a specific book within there, as I usually... Speak to God for my answers. You just mentioned folk tales. Is there a reason? Well, phase before they started to come within the town or folk tales to me. Most of my information with the iron was what my father told me and his grandfather told him. I always thought it was it was just poppycock, but after one of them tried to attack me and tried to chase me through the fence, started to burn, then I knew, I knew that it was true. The tales are right. And Lady Varys gets her information from her line? Have you talked to her more civilly in times past? <sighs> she, she speaks of the woods speaking to her, and the spirits of the old woods, they whisper in her ears, and magic such come from the trees, and the wind is all just... <sighs> I'll turn and give Garth a look and raise my eyebrows. I know you'd you'd expect a different story from someone who serves in the Church of Unity, wouldn't you? Can I make an insight check? Is he talking about her possibly being a druid? Uh, with it, you can roll an insight check if you like. Uh, with it, the way he's describing, uh, he definitely seems that she has a more of a type of nature connection. Uh, so probably a pretty good guess with that. She seems to be some type of druid. Um, yes, uh, I believe Father Hogan obviously uh, perhaps wouldn't approve, but at this point, I think we need to uh, we need to talk to the fair lady. You can talk to her, and uh, I never do not approve. You 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 speak of that. I should be more understanding, but this is not powers from some type of divine being. This is this is witchcraft. Witchcraft, I say. Father, sure, surely the what this sure, is. surely knowledge of the forest would lead us in the direction of the Fey. Well, that is why I informed you of 
of what she knows, but I, I, will, I, I will not talk to that wretched woman. We do not have the ability to discriminate about who we talk to to help your village. And ultimately, that's what we all want to do. <sighs> he calms down a bit, lets out a long breath. All right. Do I can I can show you where she lives, or I can just tell you. It's, it's up to you. She gets your blood boiling. You don't need to walk us right to her front door. I'm sure we can find her. But before we do something like that, um, I think we need to set out a plan uh, for what we're going to do. Father Hogan, this is the one place in town where I truly feel safe, and, and I want to say thank you for, for giving us sanctuary here to, to make our plans. We're trying to help my my home, so it's the least I can do. So here's what, as I see it, what we still have to take care of before we go. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make uh, inroads into the, the woods as early as tomorrow morning after we've had a good night rest. Um, if we have two days, then using the first day for this might be pretty useful. Uh -huh. If it turns out that the person in the manor is in fact the champion that we're worried about, then we just up our timetable a little bit. And if it's somebody else and we learn some other things, then more to the more to the good. Uh, so if that gives us uh, the rest of the day, uh, we need to go to the tavern um, for a couple of reasons. Number one being getting that owl head mounted where it belongs and Cinder's name up on the wall, obviously. Priority number one. But also I, I'd like to spend some, ta some time uh, letting everyone in town know uh the dangers uh that they're about to face in a way that maybe uh, keeps them uh from panicking uh and maybe lets them know what they need to do in case of an attack uh number two i think uh calvin's calvin's idea about the library is very good and if we have some people researching some of those books taking a couple hours and going through that might give us more information that is useful um that's something else that uh that I think that we should uh, follow up on. And of course, we need to talk to uh, the uh, the lady uh, because uh, there might be more information there as well. Am I missing anything? Grim, may I? Yeah, uh, you, guys, you guys can cut in any time. I just want to know, this is out of game kind of, did we uh, see the owl bear come across that bridge to the south? Uh, with it, no, it went like this. It came from there? Okay. Uh, all right. Then I'll say to Garth, no, I don't think so. Uh, and I'd like to volunteer to check the library. Okay. Uh, just one sec. Yep, you can definitely... So he's restarting? Yes, so definitely you can go check the library. Uh, anybody else doing anything? We're talking to Father Hogan anymore. I the, other, the other thing I want to recommend before I, I stop talking. Sorry, though. Just give me. Okay. I, I, we need to rest. Like at some point, we need to we need to rest, like a long rest. I mean, you that's might it. need to. Sorry. I don't, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you spellcasters and your rests. Um, I. I would like to speak to Father Hogram for like a second. Um, I just want to ask Father Hogram if anybody in town by the name of Tylor has come to speak to him. By the name of Tylor. Mm. Going to i trying to remember one. No, I don't believe anybody by that name. Do you have a physical description? No, I just know he's having nightmares, so I might, I thought maybe he would come to you to try and relieve those things, but. Uh, no, I haven't had anybody the name of Tylor, but. If I have anybody in the who comes and asks me, I can. Can I have a name? My name. Yes, so I can point him in your direction. 
Yeah, my name is Cinder, and if he needs to ever talk to anybody about nightmares, uh, you can direct him to me. I'm sure we're probably, I guess maybe now we're staying at Father Hogram's, but, or your place, I guess, or the inn, I don't know, we haven't actually discussed that. But I know Garth feels safe here, so I don't know if he would feel safe in the inn. And I'll look at Garth. I'm not going to wake up stabbed. Are we... We haven't discussed staying here. You see, as you're talking, he's like ravaging his brain. Oh! Uh, yes! Tyler! Yes, I can't believe it. I've heard he, he hasn't come to see me personally, but you're talking, yes. He's talking about Tylo in town. Yeah. Didn't know if you were meeting someone else. No. He has not come to me. He, he hasn't been leaving his house. Rumors around town is he's been having trouble, and I myself do my ritual out at the town, and I am sad to say I haven't had the time to go and visit him. You haven't had the time to go see somebody who's suffering? Hey, he's been trying to build a defensive net around the whole town. It's yeah, an understandable that works thing. out so well. Well, Cinder, he's doing his best. Okay. Oh, and, oh. And, we're, and we're here to help. She's she's right. If you all, if you all wish to stay here, that's, uh, that's the least I can do. Um, I don't have much for beds, but I can get blankets and such. Um, you can sleep in the pews if you wish. And you see he has like a little bit of like a defeated face after what Cinder said. And um, if you need me, I I'm going to be gone for a little while. What do you mean gone? Where are you going? Roll me a persuasion check, uh, Cinder. Or intimidation, whichever one you want. Uh, they're both charisma. Can I, it doesn't matter. Can I, can I give her? Uh, no, nope, uh, this was her. This was her taking a jab at him real quick, but she wasn't trying to achieve anything that she thought. Uh, wait, what did you say? Intimidation or what? Intimidation or persuasion? Uh, I feel like she's not trying to intimidate him per se. Either way, it's charisma, so it's gonna suck. Oh, maybe not. Oh, look at that. Uh, I've... No, yeah, your, your friend is... I, I speak of trying to save the town, and I've been so focused on thinking that the wall was the answer. I've... I've ignored my duties. Um, I'm... I, I'm... I will be stepping out for a while. You see almost like a little bit of a, a fear on his face, but I should go try and see if I can help Tybor. You're Are you scared of what he has to say? Oh, I... I make the pilgrimage every day to try to build the wall, and I do that because I think I can... I know it's a futile effort, but it's, it's what I'm trying to do, and I just... You've seen the things that... Come after the church. Yeah, yeah, I have Father Hogram, and half of them are Fae. And you know how they get to people, or you know how any other thing gets to people is through nightmares. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's the reason he hasn't left, left his house. Fine, you. I don't fully understand the Fae, but you seem to know what you're talking about. So you're right. I, you need to check I on him. I will. Um, All right, who was he need to check on? Tylor. He hasn't yeah. been sleeping and he's he's had nightmares. It seems very trivial. Who's Tyler, who's Tyler? He's just a dude that's in town that hasn't left his house because he's had nightmares and shit. Yeah, so the mayor informs you that when one of the when one of the raids happened, uh Tylor killed one of the fake creatures. And since then, he has been having nightmares, uh, hasn't been leaving his home, 
and uh, he keeps seeing, he keeps telling people that he sees a creature with very large teeth uh, always appearing outside of his window. Okay. And so the father has kind of yielded to the fact that he should go check on him now as kind of... With uh, 18 persuasion, Cinder made him feel like shit. And, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> So he he has been ignoring his priestly duties, and Cinder doing very good persuasion role. He needs to take care of that. If okay. you don't, Thanks. Father Hogram, I will. And even if you do, Father Hogram, I also will. But maybe you should do your job, yeah? And you see he's like muttering to himself under his breath. And you hear at one point, just like Lady Verse and just. <laughs> Fine. Yes, I'm, you're right. I, I need yeah. to take care of this. And he starts like packing up his things and like throwing on one of his nicer robes. I've. Please lock up once you're done. And he starts walking towards the double doors. She's going to glare at him like the back of his head while he leaves could do a middle finger, he would be doing it. Fucking eye bite. Level five. <laughs> Can't even cast a booning dude. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Oh. He starts heading towards the door. Looks like he's heading out. Uh, when he leaves... I will turn to the party. Oh, sorry, so, go ahead. Wait, go ahead, Corey, dude. Go ahead. Oh, all right. uh, as, he, uh, as soon as he leaves, uh, I turn to Cinder. I say, I'm I don't. I don't know you well. Um, you. You seem honorable, and and you are <laughs> definitely more than capable. Um, but I have to. I have to insist that you show a higher member of clergy more respect. Um, I'm what? Okay. What? Oh, sorry. What does that mean? He. He is the leading clergyman of this of this village he he okay. his his mere position demands oh. more respect um but I, I i can appreciate your perspective i just i don't think I, it I, does he's still a person and he still has a job to do and he literally admitted that he wasn't doing that job up to par Cinder, don't get me Cinder, wrong. You're, I, I, I'm going to stop you both right there. Uh, whether or not he's a priest doesn't mean he automatically gets respect. I think he does deserve respect in this case. Cinder, you just took a shit in the pie that I was making. Um, I'm sorry. Did he, I gave him respect. I told him he needed to check on something. That was very important. And as far as our cause is concerned... Cinder, Cinder, Cinder. He was going to check on the boy. No, he wasn't. I, uh, you don't know that. Yeah, I do. I'm setting up. All right, I'm setting something up here, and you're 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 making it very hard. What are you I, setting I, up, Garth? Please enlighten us, or maybe I won't fuck it up in the future. Okay, uh, if everyone is ready, I will elucidate. Yeah, um, please. He told me the folklore uh, that he knew, and it's kind of a big deal. Um, Apparently, the Fae had a deal not just with this town, but with all of uh, the kingdom, that as long as the bloodline of the king stayed in power, they had friends with the Fae. Uh, when that changed and when the leadership changed hands to the, to the, merchant, the mercantile class, um, that deal was broken. So this is not just a, a town situation. This is much bigger. This is just the start. Uh, I think we have a chance to, I don't know, maybe help a little bit, but um, there's a lot that needs to get done. This is bigger than just one little town that's in trouble. It's bigger, in fact, than one boy who's having nightmares. We're going to have to actually work very hard to keep ahead of this. Um, so then this we need is, to go to the source, is what you're saying. We need to go to the source, that's right. But we first, we need to press. find the source, which means you should let me go and try and track down the original deal. Yeah, we're going to find the original deal. That's going to help us a lot. Lady Varys is also going to help us a lot because whatever information she has, we can throw in the pile. The that hasn't changed. The source is the Fae. We need to go to the Fae Wild. As you know, when dealing with the Fae, the wording of the deal is extremely important. The more we know about that, the more prepared we will be. Yeah, to but the this source problem. is not on this plane. The immediate well, threat is. I mean, uh, we're not. 
roll me a history check with advantage because it deals with the Fae. Wait, who? Cinder. Oh, me. Okay. History check? Yep, with advantage because you are doing uh, into the Fae. Uh, you know in your training, um, the reason why you are trained in hunting and tracking the Fae is that they do sometimes appear on the material plane. Yeah, so like I've said, the the source is not on this plane. We have to go to the Feywild. We we are on the material plane. I don't know if you Yeah, know. that's uh, you don't think I know that? Are you do you not think I'm I know where of, I am? I'm, I'm saying out of character. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. I did not mean to cop that attitude if that was out of character. Um the funny thing is, Cinder kind of jumped over the, uh, Mel jumped over the, it's great in character, because she knows that maybe this is the source of this problem is here, but probably the bigger problem is not here. Yeah, well, um, that's me. I, 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 I would always concur to, to pursue the source of any problem, but we have leads right now. We have good leads, and we know that there is a, some kind of mansion in, in, the forest that uh, would, is, could possibly house the, the, the leadership of the current threat to this village. Um, their source may be in the Feywild, but we need to find these these beings first that, that reside on this plane. Yes. Yeah. If, and if, the... we, if we walk into the Feywild to look for the source, and while we're gone, a hundred owlbears drop on the town and eat it, that's yes. not... Very helpful. But these people keep talking about forests, like the the forest beings or whatever their words are, which basically means the Fae. So if we go into this forest, we're finding the source of that, which is technically like basically the Fae Wild. I don't understand what you're suggesting. I I, I the, think the forest people or whatever terms they use to try and protect themselves from these creatures, which apparently is iron. We have to go into the whatever forest it is. The mer I don't know. I feel like I know. Like, my character knows the name of it. I don't. The... Are you suggesting that we're going into the woods to solve the problems that we have in front of us, and that's a mistake because we should go deeper into the traveling the plains or are you saying if we go into the woods to solve this problem we need to be ready because the fey might take us somewhere else i don't know how this works so i'm i'm, I'm looking for information i mean did you just want to say fey 16 times no are you kidding me right now do you really could... not know like do you not think i know what i know like we... I know, I know you know what you know, but I don't know what you know, and I need to know what you know. So please tell us, so that I can know what you know. It's my understanding. I could be wrong. I don't know the Feywild as you, as as some of you may know more. It is it is on an entirely different plane. Yeah. I mean, simply tra simply traveling to this forest will not take us there, but this forest does does uh, apparently contain many Fey creatures. That have been put here to uh, wreak havoc on this town and 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 um, appease this deal that was made uh, generations ago. Uh, the forest is where we need to go, and we need to find the and lady to guide us there. From my understanding, earlier when we were in that first town, that people that go into this forest, um, I don't know the details, but they might not come back. They uh, there's things that happen in this forest, and from my line of work, that leads me to believe that something in this forest would probably lead us to the Feywilds. Eventually, perhaps there could it's, be a portal, or or these people could just be being eaten by owlbears. From simply that sprite saying, "The time to rise, we will make this world our own." There may be some kind of portal there that are that they're bringing in Feywild. I, I we don't know. We need to go and investigate. Yes, I don't think that we are going to stay on this plane. I feel like we will have to go to Feywilds because that is the source, and that's where these creatures are coming from. The the laughing hand, the all those things. They they have the brand of the Unseelie Court on them. 
Um, that's a possibility. I, I think you're maybe suggesting that we prepare ourselves for that inevitability. Yeah, that, yes. We've only seen one brand so far. Yeah, but this laughing hand and this fae is trying to corrupt this plane. Yes. And now we have to figure out why and who, and then see what we can do about it. I don't care right? what the why and who. We get it at the source. The why and the who will reveal itself at the same time, I believe. Either way, we're not we're not going to solve this in this town. And you can debate me on that all you want, I don't think but that's, it, that's it. That we, stay. <laughs> we, we need to we, leave the town. Yes, yeah, we're not no staying one wants, here. No one wants to stay in the town. We do want to sleep overnight in the town, and we do want to bring the then potential Then we have to go to that forest. And we, then we'll go. Yes. You you want to collect your, your iron uh, bolts tomorrow, I correct? do. I want to collect the iron bolts. I believe that Tylor, since he um, he literally came in contact with one of these fey beings, and now he's having nightmares. There's a connection to that. So I would like to gain information from him, and then, uh, and then we can proceed from there, if you wish. Well, why don't, uh, why don't you take on that and and um i will because father the, hogan is who, not gonna do anything who was it that was going to go look in the library perhaps or investigate i will and i want everyone to remember one thing is that the king the bandit king's champion is coming here in what did you say garth two days whatever that Either Two business days. Two yeah, business four. days. We don't know if it's two calendar days. We don't know if the weekend better. <laughs> What's the implication for that? If if we were to reside here, this this champion will show, or is, champ um, is showing anyway. All regardless. that was said is that we would not be killed if we were not here. It doesn't mean the champion isn't. They coming. have a deal uh, with this town. I he didn't say whatever came out of the owlbear's head. Didn't say what the deal was. Um, and what he and, but the you, terms have been broken. Yeah. With the terms for the two days, what he informed you was, if you reside within the town within two days, you will meet his champion. Anyone, not just not just us. Yeah. Oh, no, he specifically said you oh. guys. Oh, oh, okay. So that that's what I was wondering. Oh, shit, so okay. If we're here in two days, then we will encounter it. Um, so we have to be back in two days? Or we don't, and we don't encounter it. <laughs> no, he informs you that if you are within the town within two days, if you don't leave the town within two days, you will meet his champion. Okay, but was that yeah. just us, or like even if we're oh, not just... here? Oh no, he talked to you. He was. It was a threat. Uh, roll me an insight, everybody. Ah, okay. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. It yeah, was this... all kind of put okay, together. Okay, so it's us. This is important to know if it's all the townsfolk or just. I blame us. blind. Yeah, so Insight with 22. Cinder, mm -hmm. you've been threatened a lot in your line of work. Sure have. This was directed toward you. He did not say citizens. He said adventurers. He did not say the town. He said you. Okay. So with the owlbear message, no, that was directed at us. That wasn't directed at the town. So if we stick to our plan, we stay the night, we inv we talk to the boy, we talk to Lady Varys, perhaps, we investigate uh, some old documents uh, and learn of the deal, perhaps, and then tomorrow we collect our bolts and proceed uh, perhaps into the forest. Yeah. Hopefully we won't be here in two days to yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Were you all not sent here to find the missing Undying Sons troop? Uh, I was with you, yes. That, uh... that, that, that wasn't our primary uh, mission. We did take that on, and we said we would do it, but that's not exactly why they hired us. Yeah, we and were... have you found Sorry. any signs of them since you've been here, or in your goblin adventures? No sign of them yet, although if I'm Thinking back, someone mentioned them coming through town. Maybe we should be asking about that. We were supposed to be dealing with the basically bandits and the laughing hands. So, like, crazy, smiley, fey creatures. Uh, 
perhaps the uh, perhaps the 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 troop uh, moved through town and and moved on to the forest. Who knows? We need we should maybe ask a few townsfolk what if they'd seen them or heard of their travels. We heard in the first town that we were in that this. Sorry, DM. I don't remember the name of the forest, but there's a particular forest that they were like warding against, right? Yeah, so the the forest is literally right behind you. Yeah. Yes, so you have the White Forest, which is the forest right behind you, which uh, uh, disconnects the Margaret Kingdom from the White Mountain Marches. Um, it's almost like a natural defense from the south. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> yes, so the Laughing Hand was a scene in this area. It's been causing problems with the trade routes. It is known as a group of bandits that have an odd look to them, and they have a sinister laughter as they attack uh, uh, caravans. Um, the both, both Rook, uh, Emrys, uh, everybody else, you all know that they just think this is just another type of bandit troop that's causing issues. They didn't know anything much more. Uh, you were informed that a troop, uh, a garrison of soldiers were sent down to take care of it. They had disappeared with no word whatsoever after that. And they couldn't send any more troops. So because of the long night approaching, they have to finish training. And they couldn't uh, send any more men. But Emerus and Rook, you both finished your training already, so you were able to be sent out to get this job completed. So are we under the impression that they did pass through town and travel into the forest? Uh, you were already informed that they were. Father Hogum did say that a troop was here and that they were gone. Okay, so us traveling into the forest, we may we might very well find what happened to them tomorrow. We need to go in the forest. We're not staying here. That's that's pretty clear to us all, yeah? Uh, other than the night, yes. We yeah. do need to rest here the night, but yes. Yeah, we no, do, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, is that where, what we're all agreed upon then? Yeah, yes. I think so. Okay. Sure. We could, uh, we could, if if anybody else, if anybody has any other business here at the temple, otherwise we could go to the inn and uh, have a drink and perhaps find someone to take care of your owl bear head. Yeah, I owl bear head is top of the line for sure. But I would also like to speak with this Tylor because I don't trust Father Hogram. I have to say, I don't, I, sorry, I just want to say the one thing. I, I don't, I don't distrust the father, but I, I can do. appreciate, I can appreciate perspective. I think he's been under a lot of stress with what's been happening to the town. Um, but by all means, if we can help this this boy more so, then I think we should try. It's a little more personal to me than just having him do his job. So yeah, I would like to talk to him. I would still like to run a cursory search of the original deal. I might oh, go yeah. talk to the mayor and see if they know anything. In the library. Indeed. All right. Um, and I, I guess I can talk to the lady, uh, but I'll I'm, accompany wor you. I'm worried that I'm going to set something up with her and then Cinder's going to come and yell at her. So, um. I'm not going to go yell at her. She, my problem wasn't my, I feel for this Tylor. That's the only reason that I got upset at Father Hogram. I don't know what her deal is. But if you figure out something about her and start yelling at her. Who cares? I yell at everybody. Why do you care? Because I'm working. Okay, we'll work and I won't interrupt your work. How about that? I'll go do deal with Tyler and I don't give a shit about this other chick. Okay, sounds good. All right, deal. All right, so you guys got a different ways you're going. So uh, it is 11 o'clock now. If you guys want to push a little further, we can keep going. Otherwise, we can end the session here and then do all the planning next session. It's I will you. push further. Could I don't know about anybody else. Could, could we, want to get some of this back in another way. Could we set some of this stuff as uh, in between game stuff? Yeah, definitely we can. Um, what we can do is 
if people don't want super in detail, like if you guys just want me to type out stuff for you, I can fast forward to whoever wants to do type thing. Uh, it's whoever wants to do what. I think so, you just want uh, the info. I think the easiest thing would be to make my thing uh, between games because it's going to be pretty dry. It's just archiving and research. Yeah, okay. rolling, rolling search rolls and stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. what I will do is, uh, what? How are you going about this? Is the first question I call. So it. the first thing I'm going to do is talk to the mayor and ask him where his uh, town's historical legal records are kept. Uh, he would inform you. Uh, historical ones um, would be. Uh, he has some of them. Uh, roll me a persuasion check first off. Got so just asking the mayor. Hey, show me your goods. With a 13, uh, he will bring out uh, public records. Uh, well, a, what I can show you, you know, uh, our inner workings, I can't really show you much of that, but uh, you can have these, and he will give you the public works. The public works actually only go back about 65 years. Okay, so I can dismiss that and move on to the library with it so roll as you're going through the library of the stacks uh roll me an investigation as the person who runs the library really doesn't care uh with a 15 you peruse through and you find a couple very well worn out books on them i can uh, write between sessions what you all learn that is up to you or i can give you a little tidbit right now uh can you sum it up in 20 words or less uh with it right now uh yes so what happened was the town of Margato originally was under siege by the orcs far from the south. They came from the coast on boats. They pillaged through. The lord of the area. Second. I have notes. The lord of the area was under siege. He had all his resources, everyone he asked for the north, giving him problems. He wouldn't help him. Uh, there is rumors that he called on a force outside of this plane, and they gave him the power to defend his region. Uh, with that from there, it was said that he offered up the lives of those who would be his subjects. As long as his blood rang, uh, blood ran through the land, they would be safe from all external threats. Okay. That's that's uh, that's a quick bit. You have definitely more. There's names and places and things that I will write up between the sessions. Appreciate it. Yep. That's my bit. Yeah. So your biggest thing is that he says, as long as his blood runs through the lands, his people would be protected. Okay. All right. Who would like to go next? I, my thing is probably just really short. I want to talk to the um, the lady and ask her if she uh, will guide us through the woods, give us any information that she has. And I also want to subtly persuade her to be open to um, reconciling with Father Hogeth because them working together is a lot stronger than them fighting with each other. Okay, so you're trying to talk to Lady Varys. Yep, uh, you would find her up front. She is still doing the rods in the ground. And you're wanting her to go into the woods? Uh, yes. Uh, roll me a persuasion check first off. I throw guidance on you, unless you can do that to yourself. I can. I took a feat to do it. I have it as a cantrip. Twenty-seven. Okay. So, who is with Garth right now? Is the important question. I am. So, Emrys, Rook, where are you? Sorry, what's that? I'm just trying to see where everybody is right now. So, I know Cinder is gone. Going to check on Tylor, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, I think that's correct. Yep. Rook, are right, you still uh, there? Yeah, I'm there. Are you there? 
think Discord's having a big, big fart today. My internet just crapped out earlier. That's what was happening to me. Cinder? Huh? What? Me? Okay. I'm what? just going to assume what? that. Hello? Hey. Hi. You you were heading to go check on Tyler, right? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay, no, I'm just checking over things, because things may happen. So, uh, Rook, where are you? Oh, wait. Okay, so I'm just going to assume uh, <laughs> Garth and uh, uh, Emery are together. So, uh, all right, but I need a favor. Oh, well, we're here to help. I am trying to make up a concoction to help someone. And uh, with it, I need some very valuable plants that are found only within the woods. But, as you can see, the woods have become dangerous. I heard the commotion in town even from here. So, if you want me to guide you, uh, you will have to do what you will need to help me find these items. And uh, she kind of waves at you. And she, you see she stops hammering the rods. If you all follow me, I'll kind of give you the reason. Well, words are hard. I'll show you. All right. Can I make an insight check? Does she seem sincere or does she seem like she's clearly hiding something? Roll me insight check. She seems pretty sincere, but definitely her the way she she talks, she doesn't seem to want to give you all the information right off the bat. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So with you two, you all head towards the woods. You go through the village. If you, you when you were there, you would kind of go through this farmland far out. And then right on the edge of the villa the village, you see this old wooden hut. A little bit of disarray. You see vines are wrapping up, almost seem to be binding the building together, holding its structures. You see the looming woods far behind her. As you walk up this little small hill, you see her house. She waves you. All right. And you see all around her house, there is metal rods, very windily tight together. Seems she's already started to slowly put, well, seems she's uh, encased her home with these. Much like Father Hogram. Exactly. All right. First off, when we come in, I need you all to not have your weapons drawn. Okay? Agreed. Fair. And when we get inside, when you see what you're going to see, I need you not to draw your weapons. Fair? Agreed. Why would we need to draw our weapons? Oh, I don't think we need to ask that question out here. Let's just go inside and not draw our weapons. Very well. All right, so as you all enter, her home is made up not mostly, uh, like there is no metal within her house. Everything is made up of oak and wood. There almost seems to be weeds and vines that are making up furniture and generally making up the interior of this house. You go into the main room, and then you see there's a back room where little dangling vines are covering up the entrance. All right, I'm going to show you back here, and I need you both to make a reception check. Got it. Emery, you hear coming from the room. <sighs> Both you and Garth hear like a groaning almost of in pain coming from that back room. Uh, is, is someone not well? Do they need medical attention? Uh, this, this is why I brought you here. And once again, you can't draw the weapons. Um, Garth. Um, sense of narrative tension is just like loving this right now. She looks at you both to kind of see a visual of you won't draw your weapons. Clear, clear open hands. Yep. All right. As you all walk through the vines and enter in the back room, you see encased in this weird moss. Almost completely, like, uh, how you would say, you know one of those beds where you, like a water bed, when you lay on it, you sink into it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you see this moss almost filled like bed, and you see laying in there a man. Emery, you know this type of armor. This is the armor of the Undying Sons. And you see this man, his arm completely turned to wood. One eye looks to be a small protruding, almost like en energy. 
and you see slowly it looks like vines are starting to encase the rest of his body just ever so slowly i turned to garth is this is this what you were meant you were talking about men turning to wood it's similar yeah yes uh, i believe this is more of what we saw this one here came into town a couple weeks ago him and a bunch of other men he was the only one to return he was encased in some weird blackish ooze and you see she has like a, a couple small containers that she points to i need the flowers and i need the vegetation to create a cure as i feel he's been touched by the forest folk this uh this cure could it um prevent this kind of affliction from being from happening it's not so much of as a, pre a preventative it's more as a reaction to it so if you were ever infected by this type of growth it will be able to stop it i had some but i had to use it upon myself it's a a kind of cure disease potion, I take it, then. Oh, no. This is specifically for this. This is almost, how you would say, dispelling the magic as well as curing the disease, as this disease is magical. Mm. It's, fa it's fascinating. What, uh, what kind of flower do you require? I need many different types of flowers. She will open up the book and point to things I'll write out in between sessions as there is a long list of things that she needs. And these are all available in the forest? And the forest is very well enchanted. It's why I moved down here a couple of years ago. I was hoping to spread my apothecary healing, but it seems that that has been put on hold. As something very dark has taken forth the hold of the woods, she kind of shudders. And I feel one of them lies deep within it. You fear to even say their name. It's not so much their name as what they are. And what are they? She kind of looks over, grabs up one of her books, and shows you a picture. Uh, I need both of you to roll me either a history or a nature check. I think that's going to be history. 15. You see in the picture by what's, what she's showing you, it looks like you've heard of these. You've never seen one, but it is an old crone. Her skin almost completely filled with blisters. An outreached hand in the drawing of the pictures. And you, with it, it is known as a hag. Oh, they don't sound uh, very pleasant at all. They aren't. I tried to show the old man this, but he doesn't want to talk to me. Fear this is what's causing his nightmares. And the, and the nightmares of uh, the young boy, then, too. No, I've talked to that boy. That boy is something else. Oh? Is he afflicted with this this wood disease? Oh, no, I don't know what's going on with him. I've tried could talking. Just, hmm? Could it just be simple fear of being haunted by a smiling, sharp-toothed monster? I thought that at first. He hasn't left his house for days. That's what everybody tells me, but I've gone to his house once or twice, and he wasn't there. One time I did get to check over him. There's something dark hovering over that boy. Something that I don't quite trust, but he hasn't been causing any harm, and I fear the village folk would just murder him in his stead. Father Hogum and, uh, and our companion are on their way to see him now. Should we be concerned? <sighs> I don't know. But all I can say is hopefully your companion is good with a weapon. And we'll end that right there. No. All right. Nice. Cinder. Yeah. What you doing? What was... were you doing? Hmm. I'm going to see Tyler, the 
that one. All right. No problem. So you head through the streets. You come to a small house as you've been informed where Tyler is located. You walk past the estate and you arrive at a very small ramshackle home. The roof is just made of standardized cedar planks and it has been maintained very well, almost meticulously well, as there is no, uh, you know, when you get like the, uh, the speckle going on your side and everything like that, his house is very, very well maintained, like clean to a fault from the outside. Okay. What do you do? Uh, do I see Father Hogum at all? Like, I don't know how far behind him I was. You guys had a pretty good conversation, and you also told him to get his ass out of Dodge, so you do not sure see him. Sure did. Okay. I'm going to Awkward. knock on Tyler's door. All right. You knock on the door, and it slightly opens a little bit. Oh, no. Um... I'm going to, like, just continue knocking on the door as I, like, kind of push it open. All right. As you keep knocking and you keep pushing the door open, you open the door and you see a filled room. You see, laying on the floor, Father Hogan. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to run up to him and... Uh... I don't know much about healing, but uh, can I see if he's okay? Like, is he alive? With it, roll me a medicine check, and then I need you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. A medicine. Oh, sorry, my advantage is still on. And then a uh, dex save throw? Dex. Yep. All right, you go up. You put the your hand on check him. Father Hogan's still alive. And all of a sudden you hear directly behind you. You tried to talk to me, and it seems I didn't want to talk any And all of a sudden you feel a large thud over the back of your head, and you are out cold. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. All right, and we're in the session there. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Do we need to roll d10? Oh no. No, no you guys we haven't... haven't gone to sleep. Ah, uh, you're right. Okay. The only one that, who needs who who has anything after session is the one who is out cold because it is a fish kind of sleep. Oh no. I hate that voice. I fucking hate that voice. It's great. What are you using for that? Some kind of filter through Discord? Yep. 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 I love it, but it's like it's a little bit hard to understand what you're saying. Which yeah, I got to fine tune him a little bit more. Yeah. That one was that the was it exactly the same as the one earlier? Because it seemed a little bit clearer this time. It was time. a little cleaner. It's a little bit cleaner. This one has echoing voices because it's for reasons. Yeah, I also think maybe it's a, a little bit how fast yeah, you speak. Super distorted. This is resistance. That'd be so cool. Resistance is futile. <laughs> yeah, I think it also has to do just like basically how fast you speak. So if you like talk super fast, I think it would be. Yeah, talk more with us like this. Uh, can, you turn yeah, that pitch? Of that. can you pitch it up too? This one is, uh, these ones are already um, the highest pitch. Oh, no. <laughs> That's precisely what the sprites sound like. No, I'm scared. <laughs> Alvin! Oh, no. This is the probably no normal one. Yeah, lower your shields and surrender your ships. Oh, my God. I hated that voice so much. Yeah, it just makes it a little hard to understand. But other than that, I love it. I'll try and do better in the future. Oh, no. <laughs> We've gotten full Wizard of Oz territory on that one. That was a cave. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like it. All hey, right. No attention to the man behind the book. 
I did enjoy though. Garth is like, we're gonna go talk to the old lady who seems to know everything that's gonna go on. This will be quick. Mm hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't give a right. shit about that old lady. She has the information we need. Cool. So does everybody else. I don't. I don't care. Well, to be fair. No one was going to talk to you guys. And then Garth was just like, I can totally see these fairies who are literally spying on all of you. Yeah. So the mayor's like, holy shit. Yes, please, for the love of God, help us. So. Speed run it. Cool, cool, well, cool. Hopefully you all enjoyed the session. Uh, Rook, yeah, I haven't heard from you for a while, so I don't know if you're still here. Yeah, sorry. I have this on push to talk. No, I know them struggles. No, you're good. Right. You also Just don't say sure. a lot of things. Alrighty, so hopefully everybody enjoyed the session. Um, as long as I can keep getting sleep, uh, the next one will be on December fourth. December fourth. Okay. December fourth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, good. That's two weeks, weeks away. That's the Christmas uh, month. That is a Christmas month. If you want. If everybody can make it next Friday, I can probably do next Friday. Fuck yeah, I, I can do next Friday. I can be I persuaded. I have no idea. I'll let you guys know. I'm around probably 100%. Yeah, I'm going to say you are. <laughs> I'll do my Wednesday check, and then we'll go from there. Do you not have your I... other Friday group? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're moving to Saturday. And did that happen already? We're, we're slowly making the progress. So we're, t we're in between chapters right now. They got sucked into an interdimensional portal because they failed to close it. So now they're on literally limbo right now. It's good times. Okay. So when do you know, when do you know if that's like an actual thing that you're not going to do it every Friday? Cause I uh, kind of want to do my campaign. Yeah, that should, it should be within the next, uh, like we're in between acts and then after the act, we should be, uh, back on to the Saturday. So I pretty much has already transitioned. Okay, while everybody's here, like, do you guys want to do every Friday, or can you not, or are you okay with every other Friday? I can probably manage most Fridays. Uh, I would certainly be able to give enough heads up if I couldn't. But, okay. Uh, I would say, I'd say I'd pretty much be around every Friday. Would, yeah, so would we want to do every Friday? Because me and Grim were talking, and it would basically be his campaign one friday my campaign the other friday so i don't know how you guys would feel about that and if nobody I mean, says no anything i'm gonna assume it's fine sorry i was distracted can you repeat that so basically grim is doing his campaign every other friday but um, right. I also know Grim wants to play a PC character, so I have my campaign kind of queued up. So if we want to do every Friday, basically we would do Grim's campaign every other Friday, and then on the in-betweens, it would be my campaign. That's cool. What What's the setting of yours? Um, my... I don't know if I want to say anything. Um... So my campaign, basically, uh, I just, I require a lot of your backstory. My campaign requires a lot of um, your character's backstory in order for me to write anything. I have my main plot points. Um, so, but basically at the beginning of your campaign, you kind of wake up in a scenario where you have to figure things out. Okay. Is it Faerun? I don't know what that means. She's <laughs> that not for realms. Uh, yeah, I mean, I draw things from Forgotten Realms, but it's not like by the book. Not like direct canon lore, etc. Yeah, no, no, no. But all all Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition rules and and oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, my campaign derives mostly from character backstory, so I have main plot points, but a lot of the things that I have to write literally have to do with um, characters in the campaign, so I can't really write that until I get that information, but um, I'm not really going to do that until I have absolute... Um, 
like like, like agreement like people are be like to be like yeah i'm going to do this right. sounds like it's a little bit ways off too in terms of development uh, as far as development goes, like I have the main plot points, I have the maps kind of drawn out. It's just uh, things that I need to draw your characters with. I need the backstory. Okay. So I I I didn't want to work on too much, like work on it too much, unless people were like kind of into it, and nobody actually said if they wanted to do every Friday or every other Friday. Um, but if you guys are into every Friday and kind of switching out the campaign, I will, I'll work on that a little bit harder and I'll, um, cause there's certain things I need from your backstory and I can send that out to you as soon as possible. But I just, I wasn't sure that everybody wanted to do every Friday. So I kind of held off. Yeah. Every Friday sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody's okay with keeping their notes straight and like switching back and forth every other week. That's yeah, up to you. Otherwise, yeah, that's the only thing. I'm doing that anyway. I play on Sunday nights. With oh me. shit. Okay. okay. All right. Yep. So hopefully you all enjoyed the session, and yeah, I will yeah. let you know midweek uh, if we can play next Friday, and we'll go from there as you guys are going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, that's good. That's it was awesome. Thank you very much. I have to go get a lozenge for my throat from too much talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you talk <laughs> so much. Have a good weekend, all. Yeah, you too. Have a good night. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to throw you in a secret channel one second so people can uh, come in. All right, Cinder. Hi. You get a large thunk over the back of the head, and it all goes black. All of a sudden, you see a little small light. Do you walk towards it? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. As you're walking down this completely blank, dark uh, area, the light gets bigger and bigger until you see a doorway. Do you go through the doorway? I do. As you go through the doorway, you are back within your room within the order. Everything is in place. Everything is lined up. Everything is meticulous as you keep it. And you see your large full body mirror in the corner. What do you do? I'm going to go look in the mirror. All right. As you look in the mirror, you see yourself as you are. Strong, powerful hunter. One who doesn't give guff about anybody and seems to fear nothing. And all of a sudden, you hear a voice in the back of your head. Do you like how strong you are? <laughs> yeah, I fucking yeah. do. That's right. You've wielded what has been given very well. Would you like to be stronger? Why are you asking me that? Because if you can give me a little wiggle room. I could help grow your strength. You feel a little burning sensation from the tattoo on your back. Who are you? Names aren't important. All you need to know is that I've been put in here by neither of our choices. And it's getting a little stuffy riding in the back. Oh, you don't like being held captive, do you? Would you like to be held captive? No. And then I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ah. Oh, where's my character sheet? I think I closed it. Hold on. Uh, load, please. Yeah, roll 20's been terrible. Uh, wisdom saving throw? Yep. Okay. With it, all of a sudden you feel like your skin where the cracks are, the flames start to burn up. It feels as if something's trying to leave your body, but you push back and you hear the voice. Mm. 
Seems you will still want to rely more on your strength. <sighs> I guess I have to rely in my prison. Unless you're open to discussion. <laughs> I am open to discussion. Well, the deal is simple. Yai was put in here, not by your doing. And the seal on your back is binding me. We're able to locate some things. We'll be able to unleash a bit more of my power, and maybe I'll get some personal time out and about. Are you able to do things outside my body? I no longer have a physical body, but how you would say I can let my mind wander a little bit more. Okay, what do you want to get out of me? Like I said, what I want is what everybody wants. Freedom. Yeah, In yeah, turn. what do you want? I want to be free of this seal as I've been bounded. Okay, get to the point. What do you need to get out of here? What I need is not on this plane, but on another. So what I need you to do... So the Feywild? Oh, no. Not that place. But it's a good waypoint to begin. Mm. If you can find your way off of this plane, we'll talk further, and I will see if we can get you to where I need to go. Fire realm. Fire realm. And with that, you all of a sudden are thrusted into an area where there are bouts of flames everywhere, volcanoes going off into the distance, and you're thrown further in again. You're staring. You know this scene. You've seen it in your nightmares. The bubbling, churning lava pit. And you see the eyes, those burning eyes. The hand reaching out almost seems to grab your face for a moment. And then you wake up. Mm. Okay. Yep. Ah, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get that without a roll. <sighs> get what? Uh, just any sort of description about those nightmare things. But I guess that might be different. <sighs> What do you mean by that? Uh, just the the rule I have to make at the end if I go to sleep. But this. Oh no! This was this was different. the first time you slept. Like the role, the nightmares that are protruding. Uh, those just so what it is is I give you tidbits about your backstory as we go along, mm -hmm. and every once in a while you're gonna get one to progress it further. The roles are more just how quickly you keep getting more and more stuff. But there will be times where I have to be like, hey, here's your backstory, just so you know I didn't forget about it. Okay, so this time, technically, since I was knocked unconscious, that's where this came from? I didn't actually yeah. go to sleep? You, yeah, no, you don't have a long rest. This is right. just like your your subconscious had a rest for a moment because you're, you're out cold. Right, and okay. And whatever wanted to talk to you, your defenses are down a little bit, so it got to talk to you. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. The roles are more, if I have to describe the roles, it's the reason why they don't happen all the time is Cinder doesn't let down her guard a lot, probably, even in her sleep. Yeah. So, yep. Okay, that makes sense. I get it now. Yeah. Getting knocked out cold, your subconscious kind of took a shot. <laughs> right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. All good. All right. Cool. Goodbye. Okay. Have a good night. You too. You too.